Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your kind attention, please? Uh, as we are about to begin, we are requesting everyone to get ready because our program will start in five minutes. For participants joining through Zoom, kindly identify yourselves properly by indicating your agency or company name and your full name. For example, agency dash full name. Thank you.
Okay, good morning once again. On behalf of Picard, it is with great pleasure to welcome you to, its, to this virtual event, the third DOST Picard Technology Pitch Days. I am Arma Bertuso and I will be your NC for today. This two-day event culminates the four months, five module technology commercialization mentorship series, which capacitated 60 technology transfer officers and researchers on the different pre-commercialization and commercialization strategies to push our local technologies toward commercial success. The pitch days will feature diverse agri-aqua technologies categorized as agri-aqua inputs and products, food and beverages, and equipment and machinery. This activity is part of our ongoing program titled Support to the University Strategy in Technology Acceleration Initiatives by Nurturing, Sustain, the Intellectual Property and Technology Business Management IPTBM Offices of the Consortium Member Agencies Phase 2. Before we start the program proper, we request everyone to please rise for the national, Philippine National Anthem followed by a prayer. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to meet together. Please help us to come together to make this institution reflect your kingdom. Breathe life into our ideas and decisions. Help us build a team that has love and respect at its heart. Give us the strength to continue working for your kingdom in this time of pandemic. Lord, come give us the inspiration to be the best we can be. May we be a shining example of your goodness and truth within, wherever we are. Inspire our thoughts, discussions, and ideas, and continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth for the greater glory of you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Once again, we welcome and thank everyone for finding time to join us in this special event. To formally welcome our participants, let us hear from Picard's Executive Director, Dr. Reynaldo B. Ibora.
Okay, let's um let's wait a while for uh, Dr. Um, Reynaldo Ibora's um welcome message. Okay, thank you. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. I am delighted to welcome everyone to this third DUST Picard Technology Pitch Day. I would like to acknowledge the presence of our very own DUST Secretary Fortunato T. De La Peña, all the key officials, consortium directors, inventors, and technology transfer officers of the 30 participating state universities and colleges of the Sustained Intellectual Property and Technology Business Management, or IPTBM program, with Cavite State University as the lead program coordinator. Let me also acknowledge the officials and staff of the DUST regional offices, Region 1, 5, 6, 11, and Calabarzon. The officers and members of the Association of PACI Professionals Incorporated, or APP, and all the potential investors, collaborators, and partners from the industry. Thank you also to our day one evaluators, Attorney Bayani Loste, President-elect of the Licensing Executive Society Philippines and Treasurer of APP, and Professor Matthew Escobedo, Chair of the Subcommittee for Technology Innovations of the Management Association of the Philippines and Professor of the ASEAN Institute of Management. Thank you also to the training coordinators, organizers, and staff of the different Picard divisions who pitch in their time and services. This event would not be possible without everyone's help and support. In this two-day event, dubbed as the SNT Creations for the People, you will hear stories of technologies generated from the different research laboratories across the country. Behind these creations are also stories of hard work and creativity of our very own inventors. Let us hear our very own SNT Creations offering technical solutions and potential investment opportunities. Let us hear the technology pitches of our technology transfer officers who package these local inventions into viable business ideas. They have spent the past five months building up and refining their pitch decks that they will pitch for five precious minutes. By now, they must have realized that technology transfer is not an easy task as we need to process these SNT creations to cater to the needs of the evolving market. To our valued investors, may you find these SNT creations relevant to your current and upcoming business plans. We believe that more of them should reach the marketplace, and with your help, we could make this a reality. Let this two-day event be the meetup of the academe and the industry. May our collaboration build SNT-based enterprises across the country. Together, we can move this SNT creation to serve the people. Muli, magandang umaga at maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, Dr. Ray Ibora, for that warm uh, welcome. Yeah, indeed, um, we really need a lot of our creation um, of SNT technologies. And it's, this event is really for the meetup of the academic and industry. Okay, salamat po again, Dr. Ibora. At this point, uh, we will have another inspirational message to be delivered by our very ever be supportive uh, DOS3 Secretary, Secretary Fortunato T. De La Peña. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Uh, salamat, Dr. Ibora, for your we warm welcome. Sa lahat po ng ating mga kasamang opisyalis dito, mga ahensya, organisasyon, mga entrepreneurs, na nabanggit ni Dr. Ebora, gusto ko rin magpasalamat sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo dito sa pangatlong DOST Picard Technology Pitch Day. Under this new normal, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of the program team and the organizers for coming up with this two-day event. Thank you also to our viewers from the private sector or from industry. I am hopeful that you will be our future partners and takers of our local inventions. We may have two parties in this virtual room, the technology pitchers from the academe and the potential technology takers from industry. But we all share the belief that science, technology, and innovation is the key to social and economic progress. For the technology pitchers, your goal is to get the audience or technology takers excited about the value of the business idea 
within five minutes and eventually open business opportunities for the commercialization of the technology. In making your audience excited about your product, you need to influence their opinion in the most positive way. I remember an American diplomat, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, saying that everyone is entitled to his own opinion but not to his own facts. This reminds me of your strength in pitching your technology-based business ideas. Let the facts about your technologies influence the opinion of your audience, which are the technology takers, in the most positive way. Be inspired pitchers that events like this launch the commercialization of some of the academy-based technologies like the Andali RT lamp test kit for uh, porcine epidemic diarrhea in swine, the Alcagon aquatic feed, the Acticon biopesticide against fusarium wilt, the Chevron Bali products, the pelletizing machine for goat feeds, the Nutrio biofertilizer, the BDOZ botanical dewormer for native chicken, among others. Let this event be an effective avenue to sell your science. The DOST understand that innovations enhance economic productivity only if they reach the desired markets and achieve commercial success. As you all know, we are currently implementing a new innovation act with DOST as one of the startup enablers. Uh, pitching your intellectual properties shall contribute to the implementation of this law as startups utilize intellectual properties or IPs to protect their core business activities, build up the brand, boost market competitiveness, and create new sources of revenue should you license your goods or services to existing enterprises. If you had to pick one moment in history to help a fellow Filipino, better choose this moment under this new normal. Choose a Filipino invention. Invest on our local technologies. These are extraordinary times and we must take extraordinary actions to reach out, to help out, to rebuild our economy through science and technology creations. This is not just about the negotiation and the trade. It is also about building relationships. Your investment will strengthen our research and development and inspire our inventors to create more innovations. Your active participation will nurture and promote the culture of innovation. Allow me to describe every technology pitch with three Ps. Every technology pitch resonates the power of s and creations. Every pitch creates possibilities of progress as the next startup might come from this group and every pitch calls for partnership for innovation as we aim to push our local inventions towards commercial success. Again, let me congratulate and commend all the organizers, the technology pitchers, and potential technology takers for making this event possible. Sama-sama tayong magtulungan upang ang agham ang maging sandigan ng kaunlaran ng ating bayan. Muli, Magandang umaga at maraming salamat. Thank you, uh, Secretary Portonato D. Uh, T. Tilepeña. And that was a very encouraging uh, message for all of us. Um, may we achieve the three P's of technology pitching, power of SNT creations, possibilities of progress, and partnership for innovation as we aim to push our local inventions toward commercial success. As Secretary de la Peña said, invest in Filipinos. Okay, muli maraming salamat po sa ating DOST Secretary. Now we would like to acknowledge the presence of our participants whom we would like to thank for their dedication and efforts in the past few months. Let me uh, first acknowledge the officials and staff of the DOST regional offices from Region 1, 4A, 5, 6, and 11, the officers and members of the Association of Pake Professionals Incorporated, or APP, 
all the key officials, consortium directors, inventors, and technology transfer officers coming from the Ilocos Agriculture and Resources Research and Development Consortium, or ILARDEC, headed by the mentor agency, Mariano Marcos State University. Together, its mentee agencies, we have the Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University. We also have Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College, North Luzon Philippine State College, Pangasinan State University, and University of Northern Philippines. We also have the South, Southern Tagalog Agriculture, Aquatic and Resources Research Development and Extension Consortium, or STARDEC, headed by Cavite State University, which also serves as the lead coordinating agency, together with its mentee, the South Luzon, Southern Luzon State University. We also have University of Rizal System, Marinduque State College, Batangas State University, and Rizal Technological University. The next group comes from the Bicol Consortium of Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development of B or BCARD, including Bicol University as the mentor agency of Camarines Norte State College, Camarines Sur Polytechnic College, Sorsogon State College, Catanduanes State College, and Central Bicol State University for Agriculture. The fourth group is from Western Visayas Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development Consortium, or West Vardec, with Capis State University as the mentor agency of Aklan State University, University of Antique, Guimaras State College, Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College, and Central Philippine State University. The fifth and last group is from the Southern Mindanao Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development Consortium, or SMARDEC, headed by the University of Southeastern Philippines as mentor agency of University of the Philippines, Mindanao, Davao del Norte State College, Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, Davao del Sur State College, and Compostela Valley State College. Let us all give the 30 state universities and colleges a big round of applause. Okay. Okay. Of course, we would also like to thank our potential investors and guests for taking the time to be with us today. You are our partners in extending these commercially ready technologies to the Filipino people. I'm pleased to announce that we have here heads and representatives uh, from various um, organizations. First, we have the Harvest Agribusiness Corporation, Santec Feeds Corporation, East West Seed Company, Diem uh, Enterprise Philippines, Dream Agritech, Jose Ingles Junior Enterprise, Aina Agricultural Products Trading, DTI Negros Occidental, LGU Estancia, Golden and Sir Elmer Magno Jr. Trade Consultant Orisa International Philippines. Okay, to our uh, potential investors and guests, uh, thank you again for coming, and we hope you'll find technologies that will catch your interest. Okay, okay moving on, um, let me uh, acknowledge also our evaluators for this morning. Uh, we are privileged to have Engineer George Ko at Tomashan is a licensed chemical engineer and operates companies such as Green Asia Agri Ventures with tissue culture lab producing abaca, banana, and hybrid makapuno, organic and biofertilizer and export coco choir and fiber, Quattro Lubes Philippines Incorporated, manufacturing of automotive and industrial lubricants, the eight Green Care Pharma, marketing and distribution of med medicine and medical supplies, Green Care Solutions, uh, marketing and blending industrial solvents, paints, and coatings, and simple green agri uh, solutions, um, charcoal and briquettes. We also have from uh, Mercato Central Group, we have uh, Sir Daniel Aguilar, the business development head uh, for Mercato Live Markets and Cloud Kitchens. Sir Chris Moren Moreno, the vendor recruitment head for Mercato App and Sir RJ and Ma'am Vanessa Ledesma, co-founders of Mercato Central. Mercato Central is a destination lifestyle food market that delivers a wide variety of great and unique 
tasting food, organic pastry, and beverage products that is one of a kind. Every time Mercato Central opens a new market location, they generate around 200 new jobs for Filipino people and create 30 uh, new and unique food entrepreneurs. And currently, they have 23 markets and several other uh, launching soon. The Mercato Central Markets has incubated many food concepts that have successfully graduated from the market and grown and become successful themselves, including Manang's Chicken, Mama Luz shawarma, uh, shawarma Bros, Brasas, Bawais, Mary Moo, Sunrise Buckets, Tokyo Tempura, and many more. It's no wonder why Mercato Central was the only food market in the Philippines mentioned in the World Atlas Market in, uh, in the Fili um, uh, World Atlas of a Street Food published in 2017. All of the vendors in our markets under, uh, undergo a rigorous betting process by participating in a taste test on a regular basis. Moreover, Mercato Central, together with the industry's uh, top players, has already developed a restaurant business network, a network of strategic partners that help food startup businesses become sustainable, success, and scalable. So thank you very much, uh, evaluators, for uh, gracing uh, these events. OK, just to guide us, uh, on how we will proceed for today. Uh, and before we start our pitching, let me remind everyone of the important house rules. Okay. Uh, we highly encourage everyone to register your attendance using our event webpage with the link provided in the chat box. This will allow you to view and access materials from this event. Uh, for participants joining through Zoom, Kindly identify yourselves properly by indicating your agency or company name next to your full name. Okay, so that would be agency uh, dash full name. Also, microphones must be muted during the pitch presentation to avoid unnecessary noise and distraction. And a maximum of five minute presentation is allowed per technology pitch. After a set of uh, three technology pitch, a five minute question and answer session will follow to accommodate questions or clarification from the panelists, possible investors, and other guests and audiences. And uh, please kindly use the raise hand button so that, we, that the moderator can acknowledge you to speak. You may also use the chat box to type in your questions. After the event, please answer the customer feedback form available at the event webpage to get a certificate of attendance. Okay, so that's our house rule. Are you excited for the for the pitching? I am. Okay, so um, if you happen to see any uh, technology that catches your interest, let us know. We'd be happy to lead you to the next step of the process. Uh, by the way, we have a downloadable form, which um, which is the term sheet available at our event web page. So just log in if you have already registered. Okay, and now to pitch for our very own s and Creations, let's move the spotlight to our technology pitchers. Let us start the Agri-Aqua Inputs and Products category. Okay. First to pitch. Okay, I can already see them. Uh, they're happy. Uh, they're happy faces. Their smiles. Okay. To pitch. Okay, the first to pitch is Grow Big. An organic and fertilized uh, biochar medium for growing seedlings. Let's welcome our first technology pitcher, Sir Constante Julian from Mariano Marcos State University or MMSU. Are you tired of seeing your seedlings tiny and weak? Ladies and gentlemen, may I offer you our very own Groovy, a biochar medium for growing vigorous and strong seedlings. This is Constante Biulian, a researcher from Mariano Marcos State University. Did you know that vigorous seedlings are among the key factors for a successful crop production? Most farmers are experiencing low income because a significant share in the cost of production is allotted for the crop establishment. Farmers usually grow their seedlings in a seedbed, resulting in tiny and weak due to dumping off brought about by competition of sunlight, nutrient, and space. Can be a solution for a vigorous seedlings. Through this medium, farmers can attain 99% survival rate in the field. Transplanting shock and root injuries can also be avoided compared to farmers' practice. 
In addition, Robi is an environment-friendly technology and can be used in plants as fertilizer because of its nutrients. Using plastic seeding trays can impose environmental risk when improperly disposed. Use Grow Big and let us grow big only together. Now, may we offer this product to our partners in changing the landscape of seeding management practices. Our innovative vegetable farmers, business-minded nursery and garden owners, plantitos and plantitas, and organic-oriented farming practitioners. With you, our dear partners, we can create change. Growing supports EO481 and RA168 for Organic Agriculture Act of 2010, promoting organic agriculture as a farming strategy to guarantee food and environment safety. Also, with the lower house approval of the House Bill 3412, otherwise known as Integrated Urban Agriculture Act, to address the serious food security problem in the country, which is made graver by the COVID-19 pandemic. Local government units built up neighborhood associations and people's organizations for the conversion of idle lands and other open spaces in the urban areas into community garden sites. Also, the approved House Bill 8728 for the Graduation Legacy for the Environment Act requiring all graduating students in all levels to plant 10 trees before they can graduate. Around 17.5 million students graduated annually they contribute around 175 million trees. If we assume to get at least 1% share in the target market, that is 1.75 million yearly and increasing. For vegetable farmers, according to PSA in 2019, the Locos alone has an area planted to solanaceous vegetable crops of around 2,612 hectares, which requires 98.9 million seedlings. Assuming a 1% share in this target market, this requires 988,000 pieces of growing per carbon. With this scenario, we want you to be our partners in producing vigorous and strong seedlings toward attaining higher income while safeguarding the environment. With an initial investment of 2 million pesos, we expect a projected income for the first 5 years with 3% increase in annual sales from 343,000 to 386,928. With a net present value of 1.3 billion, this represents the amount that MMSU may ask to negotiate for licensing this technology at present. These numbers tell us that our product is not only efficient and environment friendly, but more so, it is very profitable. We are glad to inform you that your future partners in growing are composed of soil and water specialists, and economists, and electronics engineers. We welcome collaborations and convergence. Please feel free to reach us with these contact details. Be part of the team and it's time to grow our dream. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Constante Julian. That's a uh, Grow Big from Mariano Marcos State University. Moving on, we have our next technology, the Agri Booster Plus, a fertilizer and a feed supplement for plants and poultry made from garden snail. Um, let us all welcome Ma'am Rosini Labado from Capi State University. Ma'am. Wanna eat healthy? Wanna minimize the threat posed by synthetic fertilizers and feeds on environment and human health? Introducing the Agri Booster Plus. Agri Booster Plus is a fermented extract prepared naturally using concoction of locally available inputs of high nutrient contents. Agri Booster Plus has the main ingredient, which is the garden snail, locally known as the clong. The meat of garden snail contains protein, fat, ash, water, and carbohydrate. It is also rich in calcium, potassium, and iron. Those nutrient content could sufficiently improve plant and animal growth. Agri Booster Plus is a fermented concoction extract contain essential elements, vitamins, and minerals which can support the growth and development of living systems. 
For leafy and fruit vegetables, dilute 10 to 30 ml of fermented extract in a liter of clean water. One liter can be used to approximately 800 square meter of plants. For poultry, dilute 30 to 50 ml of fermented extract in a liter of potable water. One liter can be used to approximately 95 broiler heads a day. AgriBooster Plus contains mixtures of indigenous and effective microorganisms, serves as probiotics that promote the integrity and health of soil, plants, and animals. 1,000 ml of AgriBooster Plus can be bought at 239 pesos. The potential market of AgriBooster Plus are the 63,785 farmers in the province of Capiz. Of which 9,568 farmers will be considered at this target market. The initial investment for Agri Booster Plus will be 150,000 pesos and a payback period of one year and six months with net present value of 494,796 pesos and 54 centavos. The brains behind the Agri Booster Plus are Dr. Salvation J. Ligaspi and Dr. Ryan T. Sarimo. They are faculty from the College of Agriculture and Forestry, experts in horticulture and soil science. Be your partner. Let us help farmers produce healthier foods. Call us at 0917-620-2894 or email at Burias at capsule.edu.ph. Agri Booster Plus, experience the Taklong magic. Thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Rosini Labado from Capi State University. That's our Agri Booster Plus. Okay. Now uh, let's move on to the next technology. So we have the KD, the Capipus. Um, Kapakapaikus drippings, foliar fertilizer, a seaweed-based biostimulant that contains many growth regulators. And we have here Sir Eric Relion from Dabao del Sur State College. For many years now, no, farmers have suffered Ay, dwindling harvests due to excessive synthetic input. Their soils have been severely depleted, that harvests have been in steady decline. In order to maintain their harvest, some farmers increase the amount of synthetic input. This practice comes at a high cost, financially, physically, and ecologically. People are getting sick because they absorb high levels of synthetic residues in their food. Farmers suffer losses and the environment gets damaged. Davao del Sur State College, formerly Spamas Digos Campus, came up with an innovative solution that is 100% natural, inexpensive, and harmless to our environment. KD Fertilizer comes from the drippings of Capopicus alvarezii, the seaweed used in producing carrageenan. Gathered using specialized seaweed dryers, these drippings were long considered as a waste material by seaweed farmers. Today, this innovation has provided added income to seaweed farmers aside from selling the dried seaweeds. The liquid works as a foliar fertilizer for fruits, vegetables, rice, and other crops. Research in DSSC have shown that KD fertilizer contain nutrients that are essential to plants good growth and yield. All of these benefits at a fraction of the cost of synthetic foliar fertilizers in the market. KD Foliar Fertilizer sells for 105 pesos per liter or 420 pesos per gallon. Depending on the brand, synthetic foliar fertilizers cost around 200 to 300 per liter or 800 to 1,200 pesos per gallon. At this price point, KD Fertilizer is very affordable to its target market. The farmers of vegetables fruits and crops, and even to the plantito and plantita crowd. Dako yun o kalahian, kumpara ni mo sa uban nga mong ginagamit sa unang mga pulyar. So, 
Gawas nga nindot sa iyang pamunga. Dugay po siya malugnas. Napa joy nakita namo nga bugat ang iyang timbang. Sa bunga niya green jud siya. Maski sa uban nga mga variety nga gulay namo sa batong namo sa kanipod upo paliya maong yun. Ang nakita namo nga dako ang diferensya kalainan. Sa so, wala pa makasulay sa KD sulay na mo kay naadiha ang dako nga epekto kalainan sa uban nga mga pulyar naadiha ang maayong pangabot magulay man siya o mahumay. KD fertilizer natural, affordable and effective. Sa KD fertilizer kita ay dadag Okay, thank you, Sir Eric Relion. Okay, so now may we request our three uh, pictures. Okay, we'll open now our floor for um, our Q&A for five minutes. Okay, we'll ask our evaluator if there are any questions. Yes, sir. Engineer um, George Ko or Metro Central. Are there any po questions po for our three technology features, the Grow Big, Agri Booster Plus, and the KD Foliar Fertilizer? Uh, Ma'am, meron po sa KD. Okay. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, excited about these things, no? Because I'm doing, uh, I'm into biofertilizer, no? For the KD, and if, uh, if you can answer this, no? I don't know if you can hear me. Um, first, the challenge here is the shelf life. And siguro, how often do you apply the product? You know, the cultural practices ng mga farmers, uh, there's an issue eh. So if you can expound more on that, please. Thank you. Engineer Goy is asking about the shelf life of the KD Poyer okay. fertilizer. Uh, yes, sir, you. Eric. Uh, thank you, sir. About the shelf life of the KD Fulia, um, it takes two years. And the more, uh, the, the longer the years, the more effective is the fertilizer. Uh, how often do you apply it in terms of you know, uh, application? How, uh, what is the uh, application rate? In some crops, sir, uh, we do it um, weekly. And others is twice a month. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, okay, thank you, sir. Any more questions, po, from our evaluators? Attorney Bay is also here. If you have questions, and uh, Mercato Central. Hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning po, sir. My question is three presenters. Um, um, why did you choose why did you yung descriptive, yung descriptive or generic or uh, brands or, or descriptors for your products? So that, that is addressed to our three uh, pictures. So why um, have you chosen that um, generic uh, description po? So yung po yung tanong ni Atty. Bai. Who wants to answer first? Okay. Can we ask uh, Grow Big? Is Sir Constante here? Grow Big? So, ang question po ni Sir uh, ni Attorney Bay, why did you um, choose uh, yung general description po ng inyong um, products, technologies? Any um, response from our pictures? Hello, si ma'am. Ma Sige, ma'am Resini. Yes, Hello. Good morning, everyone. We have decided or have chosen to have it Agri Booster Plus since the product itself boosts the growth of both animals and plants. That's it. Thank you, Paul. Okay. 
Sir Eric? Since it comes from the waste product. Ah, yes, ma'am. Uh, we use KD uh, for our for the name of the product because it comes from the waste of the Kapafikos uh, drippings. That's why it's called KD. Ah, Kapafikos alvarisai. Okay. And Sir um, Constante? So... Sir, nakamute po kayo, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, so our product grow big actually is made up of uh, carbonized rice hull. So it is an organic. So, and this is binded by uh, other binding materials and organic fertilizer. So as to use for seedling, as a seedling medium for uh, more vigorous and strong seedling. Okay. Um, does they uh, uh, did they answer po, sir, uh, your uh, question, Attorney Bai? Sir, nakamute po kayo, Attorney. Okay. Uh, if you have an opportunity to uh, change your brand to something that is fancy or arbitrary, that is not associated to your product or how your product works, what would it be? Uh, Bali, top of your head. Right now. Um, sir, medyo choppy po yung last na words po ninyo. Can you repeat your question po? What would you, um, your your fancy, fanciful na term or fanciful word uh, that would uh, replace your generic or descriptive term for your product? Can you think about it right now? Okay. Um, I'll just repeat po no, yung question is, sir, if you have a chance to change the brand to something fancy not associated with your product, what would it be? Okay, that's also addressed to our three pictures. Okay. Who wants to... Ma'am Rosini, go ahead. Hello po. So if right now I would change the brand, that would be Taklong Magic. Since the product is mainly made of... Uh, Oh, from uh, Garden Snail, locally known as Taklong. So, Taklong Magic. Okay. Taklong Magic. Okay. <laughs> si, sino po? Si Sir Eric or si Sir um, Constante? Uh, Sir Eric, nakamute po kayo. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. If we could have the chance to change the name from KD to others, we will choose Sea Drip because um, it comes from the sea and the drip is a waste. And then, um, yes, it is uh, probably will help the 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 crop uh, as uh, improve its growth yield. Pranganon. Okay, so we have sea drip, taklong so, magic, sea drip. Okay, <laughs> Sir Constante. If uh, we have the chance to change it into a fancy name, I uh. Uh, I think uh, we, we can associate our product into growy, <laughs> a uh, growth booster for uh, for infants or for people. <laughs> okay, so that's sir taklong magic, uh, C drip and growy. Parang you, growy you. sir vitamins <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Attorney Bai. Any more questions from our uh, evaluators? Uh, do we have here Mercato Central? Uh, any questions? Okay. So I think we still have time, no, for for more questions. Um, we have some questions here, no, um, on Agri Booster. So ito po, ma'am. How long does the NPV uh, is obtained? How many pieces do you assume to sell per month? Ma'am, nakamute po. Ma'am Rosini. The fermentation process po is uh, 45 days. And, and uh, ano po yung question? Net present value. Ah, yung net present value po. Pakiulit po. Sorry po. Sorry po, ma'am. How long does the NPV is obtained? 
and how many pieces do you uh, assume to sell per month? Okay, so yung net present value po was computed uh, considering the projected sales for five ma uh, five years rather, and then um, we expect to sell seven hundred eighty uh, bottles per month considering the market po we have here in Capiz. Okay, thank you po. Okay, um, maybe one more question uh, for KD Foliar uh, Fertilizer or seed drips, <laughs> okay, Sir Eric, how does your product differ from other seaweed-based foliar fertilizers such as CPGR? Is the price of your product can compete to existing market? When it comes to uh, the difference between the price, of course, we are cheaper compared to others because it is locally, locally produced. And then when it comes to, um, come again on the question, is the difference of the KD yeah, from other uh, seaweed-based uh, foliar uh, fertilizers such as the CPGR and the uh -oh. price, oh, how, how is your price going to comp uh, compete uh -oh. uh, in the existing market? It came from waste. Uh, okay, technically, um, the, the KD is, comes from the waste and then I think that's no cost, no cost for the waste. Then both edges, we will help the farmers the producers and then the end users, technically the farmers. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the materials is locally available within the vicinity of the sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, po, sir. Sa, sa reply ni sir Eric. Okay. So that's our first batch of our pictures. So marami pong salamat, uh, attorney Bai and um, sir uh, George, engineer George, for uh, the questions. And maraming salamat po sa ating first batch of pictures. Medyo makakahinga na po kayo ng malawa. <laughs> okay. Si sir Constante Julian from MMSU, Ma'am Rosini Labado from Capi State University, and si sir Eric Relion from Davao del Sur State College. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. Let's go to our second batch of uh, the Agri-Aqua Inputs and Products. First to pitch is we have the cacao pad has cork board, a co uh, cacao pad has cork board with higher compressibility, high flame resistance characteristic, and resilience for heavy usage. Uh, this will be uh, presented by Ma'am Rona Apolinario of Compostela Valley State College. Good day. There is a lot of qualities to be considered in choosing a good cork board. First, compressibility. It's an ability of the cork board to hold a certain thing that being pinned on it. And lastly, the quality of heaving flame resistance that enables the cork board to self-extinguish the fire and does not melt when exposed to extreme heat. Imagine if these two qualities of a good cork board will be in its highest level combined into one cork board. Such cork board will be an extraordinary. I am here today to present and to flex the qualities of our cork board products. Our cork board products has the quality of flame resistance that enables it to absorb heat and re it. It is also harmless for those who have skin allergies from wood dust, chemicals, and others, for it is made from unnatural materials. The technology processing also is also cost efficient that would benefit for the manufacturer. And our corkboard products also has a high compressibility quality that enables it to hold a certain thing that being pinned on it, such as pictures, memos, work plans, work schedules, and other important things in your office or in your home. Cacao Pad has is the main materials in producing our technology, the Cacao Pad has cork board. Cacao Pad has is traditionally lived as an undesirable waste in the cacao farms or in cacao plantations, constricting an environmental means and presenting a challenging waste management problems. 
The recovery of cacao beans from the cacao fruit generates a large amount of cacao pod shells or cacao pod has as a waste no? estimated up to 52 to 76 percent of the cacao fruit. Further, Davao region produces 82 percent or 2.27 thousand metric tons of the country's cacao according to the PACE A 2020. This manifest that there's a big supply of cacao padhas as the main materials in producing the introduced technology, the cacao padhas cork board. The technology not only aims to introduce a good quality cork board products to the end users for them to enjoy, and not only for us and for our soon-to-be business partner to enjoy a profit but also to help the cacao farmers associations or cooperatives by forging partnership with them in the process. In terms to a target buyers of the product, everyone needs a cork board in our workplace and even at our home. It is used to organize things to be done, like painting a work schedule for the employees, memos, contact directories, and even on expenses billings in our home. It is also used as a wall decor in our offices and in our home. According to a research study, the corporate market size of the year 2021 shows an impressive growth by the year 2025. And this owing to the rise in demand from the corporate and educational institutes. According also to the Board of Investment, the number of businesses in Davao City continued to rise from 2017 to 2018. This manifests an increasing rate of the target end users of the product. Our soon-to-be business partner or the soon-to-be manufacturer of our technology product will enjoy up to 40% profit as shown in the presentations. Please be our partner, invest in us, and enjoy the exclusive license of the product technology. So please contact us through our official Facebook Messenger or through our official email address. Or you can directly contact the inventor, Mr. Domi M. Ontalan, through his contact number and email address as shown in the presentations. We give great importance for your hard work and perseverance as we made these high quality corkboard products. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a correction, that is Sir Lee Serot from uh, Campostela Valley State College uh, presenting the Cacao Pad Has Court Board. Okay, our next uh, pitch, uh, technology is on cassava ethanol based hand sanitizer with aloe vera gel and orange peel essential oil. Uh, this uh, concoction, new concoction of hand sanitizer was processed from the facilities of Sorsogon State College. Uh, so let's hear from Ma'am Cheryl Solano. Wash us! We are very dirty! Hand sanitizer has been a new trend since pandemic started. The typical hand sanitizer contains at least 60% alcohol. Sanitizing our hands is one of the simplest ways to elevate the spread of the virus. As a result, there will be a significant increase in demand in the next 5 years. The question is, do we have a sustainable raw materials to meet the demand in the next five years? Anyhow, sustainability is accompanied by creativity and innovation. Good day everyone! I'm from Sarsagan State University presenting our product, a hand sanitizer composition comprising of cassava ethanol, aloe vera gel, and orange peel essential oil also called as the Casalogera hand sanitizer. 
Almost 70% of the world cassava production are in Asia, Africa, and South America. Likewise, here in the Philippines, cassava is among of the root crops that our country have in abundance. However, in the publication of the essay of the cost and returns of cassava production in 2014, instability of prices and limited buyers were the foremost marketing problems of cassava farmers. Commercialization of the Catalabra hand sanitizer may actually address the problems of the farmers. Aloe vera as another ingredient of the product is the most widespread medicinal plant worldwide because it is a well-known plant good for skin. Over the past years, aloe vera is famously known for being a skincare ingredient for beauty products. When buying hand sanitizer, one of our considerations is its fragrance. Orange peel contains an abundance of fragrant substances. Also, orange production and consumption have grown over the years. The current annual worldwide orange production is estimated at 70 million tons. On that note, the raw materials for Casalabra hand sanitizer is abundantly available. The availability of this ingredient means lower cost of production, resulting to a lower price compared to the existing hand sanitizer in the market. The organic composition of our product is a guarantee that Casa Lavera hand sanitizer is safer to use. Interested in our products? Feel free to contact us through the Facebook page of Sarsagan State University or email us at ip at sarsaganstatecollege.edu.ph Okay, that's Casa Lubera from uh, the Sursogon State College, and that's Ma'am uh, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Sulano. Okay, we have next the lactic acid technology, a new lactic acid fermentation process that reduces the conventional two-step process, achieving efficiency, cost-effectiveness, and environment-friendly. Uh, presenting will be Ma'am Linda Benaobra of the University of the Philippines, Mindanao. The UP Mindanao Lactic Acid Technology is a new and improved single-stage fermentation process for producing fruit-grade lactic acid that results to more efficient, cost-effective, and environmentally friendly lactic acid production. To date, there are no existing lactic acid manufacturers in the country. There is an increasing trend in import volume of lactic acid in the country. The country's import volume for the past five years and so observes a growing pattern except for a few declines in recent years. 
In 2019, the country imported around 1,793 metric tons of lactic acid with high chances of observing more growth in the coming years, especially to respond to the growing popularity of bioplastics. Market growth in the Philippines and in the Asia-Pacific as a whole is highly attributed to increasing demand in lactic acid's applicability in meat and food industry as a preservative, acidulant, pH regulator, and more. With this, the UP Mindanao lactic acid technology targets the market of large-scale Philippine food manufacturers that utilize lactic acid in their products, which may include noodle manufacturers, biscuit manufacturers, frozen meat exporters, fruit exporters, and other industrial customers needing lactic acid derivatives in their processes or products. The UP Mindanao lactic acid technology utilizes a microorganism that simultaneously sacrifices and ferments starchy materials in the production of lactic acid. Therefore, by passing one step from the conventional two-step fermentation process. At the same time, our technology utilizes cassava starch and dried spent yeast from brewery byproducts as sole carbon and nitrogen source respectively. With this innovation, the UP Mindanao lactic acid technology produces food-grade lactic acid at a rate of more than 98% in just 24 hours at room temperature. This offers a more efficient, cost-effective, and environmentally friendly lactic acid production. The UP Mindanao lactic acid technology bioprocess has already been developed and established. We are now at the stage of scaling it up through pilot bioprocessing with academe government industry partnership. By 2023 to 2024, we aim to conduct pre-industrial demonstration industrial production where in thousand tons of lactic acid will be targeted to be produced. Our unique selling proposition with this technology we will be the first lactic acid producer in the Philippines, utilizing a unique cost-efficient technology to provide its customers a cost-competitive lactic acid. Branding the company's product as Filipino-made or locally produced using Filipino technology will eventually be a unique selling proposition, especially to nationalistic customers. Pricing and Positioning Strategy The lactic acid product will be priced in bulk, much lower than the imported one. Since our technology is utilizing a cost-efficient process, the cost of logistics will also contribute to a much lower price. Since the product is produced locally and will not entail custom taxes and other tariffs as compared to the imported product. The product will also be positioned as an environmentally friendly alternative to traditional competition. As for the distribution plan, the lactic acid product will be distributed through a direct business-to-business -business channel under a long-term agreement with a customer. In this agreement, both parties will feel secure for a longer guaranteed period. It eliminates unnecessary costs of retendering and renegotiating the procurement. Both the parties will feel secure as long as they have mutual interest under agreement. The long-term agreement also provides opportunities to build better relationships due to increased interaction for a longer period that also increase trust and good faith which helps further to make other future strategic partnerships. Based on our theoretical costing, our food-grade lactic acid can be priced at 650 pesos and 10 centavos per kilogram as compared to the market price that is around 600 pesos to 1,300 pesos per kilogram, imported from other countries, not including custom taxes and tariffs. This makes our lactic acid cheaper compared to other products. We can be the first lactic acid manufacturer in the country to offer competitive, affordable, and quality food-grade lactic acid. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Lien Buena Obra from the University of the Philippines in Mindanao. Okay, so we invite our three uh, pitchers and our uh, evaluators okay, for our Q&A. But before uh, we, we proceed, uh, I would just like to acknowledge the uh, question of uh, Sir Toto Barcelona of Harvest uh, for the first batch. Uh, can, uh, please send quotation and technical instruction for uh, Grow Big. 
Agri Booster Plus, LKD Foliar Fertilizer to Harvest at Harvest.com PH. Um, the company is interested in distributorship. Okay, so please take note of that. Okay, so let's proceed with the Q&A. So we have here uh, Sir Liseroth, Ma'am Lynn, Avena Obra, and Ma'am Cheryl uh, Solano. Are there any questions from our evaluators? Yes, Sir George. Yes, may, may tanong lang ako kay Ma'am Linda regarding the lactic acid. Yes, po, sir. Uh, hello, Ma'am. Uh, you mentioned about this as a food grade, no? Uh, I've been following this up since uh, way, way back, no? You, it started with uh, Ma'am Ma Dulce. Yes, you know the late Dr. Flott. Yes. Uh, I've known her, no? Uh, I think that was 10 years ago. Uh, and you jump, you use now the substrate from uh, Sago to Cassava. I'm just wondering, no, how, 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 how long, saan na po kayo ngayon, no? You, you're talking about producing it uh, commercially. Uh, uh, since way back, I've been asking Ma'am Dulz nito regarding about this, no? How can we be competitive uh, towards China? They're producing it commercially and then laki ng volume nila. I know there's a big demand and the uh, I think the advantage of this is it's 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 organically organic and and you process no you jump to to way mas mas mura. But have you checked? Are are we still competitive against the uh, imported or against Japan in regards to this matter? Uh sir, so actually, um, if you I re you remember Dr. Flores, he's actually the one of the original inventors of this technology. Is the the, the the inventor of the microorganism that is used in producing this lactic acid. But we further developed it. And uh, last year, uh, we had a, a grant from the OSC that we were able to achieve the 80% uh, purity of the lactic acid, which uh, resulted in a food grade. But going back to your question, uh, as we have presented, our technology will be a one phase technology, one phase fermentation, it skips the two as uh, two steps. So that's why um the process of the one stage will give us a an advantage in terms of um the process. Uh it will save us uh, and also it will be processed under room temperature uh, compared to other processes that uh requires energy and heating. So it's actually the 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 magic of our uh, or microorganism that will give us that advantage in the process. Uh, okay. it's, it's nice to hear now that you were able to reach the 80%. No? I'm hoping to visit, uh, it's been almost a year and a half, uh, hindi ako nakapunta ng Davao. No? I hopefully, uh, baka July I'll be there. I will see, uh, pwede ba kung visitahin? Yes po. The Inventor now is Dr. Melvin Pasaporte. He used to be with Dr. Flores, so he's continuing the. Ah, okay, that's 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 good. That's good. It's nice to hear, you know, that you're doing the. That is, you know, that somebody here knows Dr. Flores. Yes, yes. Uh, she's a good friend, oh. No? Uh, she's a good friend of. Sige po. Thank you po. Thank you. Okay. Thank you po, Sir uh, George. So that's that's positive po. May meet up na po sila coming July. <laughs> okay. So, Attorney Bay, meron po pa yung uh, questions? Yeah. Sa ano, sa, sa cork board, um, I, I noticed na wala pa kayong brand. So, ano yung pinaka fanciful or arbitrary that you can think of right now? Same with dun sa Casa Lovera. Casa Lovera. So, it's descriptive of your product. Can you think of an arbitrary or fanciful brand right now? Is it direct to market yung ano yung intention? compared to um, UP Mindanao's uh, Sir, Sir I thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have... Sir, you're a little chatty, Sir. Uh, Sir, Sir, yeah, medyo choppy po, sir. Putol-putol po. Um, Mahina po yung connection. 
um, for the product, uh, the team, we have we have planned to introduce the um, account pad has for board with uh, as I will be for and as well as uh, uh, for the office and, and our region and uh, product for um, will be as the um, environmental friendly na product po as made or locally made product Okay. Yeah. Sir Lee, yung pong question po ata ni Attorney Bay, um, ano po kaya ang ano, pwede pong fanciful brand kasi po napansin po niya wala pang name yung, yung corkboard nyo. So if there's anything that uh, pops up in your mind for a fanciful brand for the corkboard. And ganun din po um, kay ma'am uh, sa hand sanitizer if you can think of a fanciful brand for hand sanitizer. Ma'am, may tanong lang po ako. Okay, okay sige sir. Habang nag-iisip po sila ng kanilang fanciful brand. Uh, corkboard po. Uh, kasi you mentioned it's compressibility and uh, uh, unflammable. Uh, nakita ko kasi if you look at the uh, outside the box, sayang kasi the product. You have a good product na it's uh, compressible. At the same time, it's lightweight. Uh, looking at the product for corkboard, I do not know the market how big it is, no. But uh, compared to food industry, if you can convert that to industrial application, that would be good, uh, especially as insulating materials, or let's say as a uh, sa mga takip na mga food, uh, and it's sourced locally, no. The one thing good about it is you you look at it at the bright side sa mga basura. I've been to to Mindanao, eh. I've seen the banana peels. And ito is kakao. Ito naman kakao has, no? But you look at it, at, kasi you could do better, let's say, much cheaper if you just do it as an organic fertilizer. I do not know, no? But as a cork board, uh, the market, I do not know if how huge the market is, no? Uh, it's just my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Um, Sir Lee, uh, did you, uh, you get po? Meron lang pong comment si Sir George in terms of the market, uh, potential market of your um your product, the uh, cacao pad has cork board. Yes. Thank you, uh, Sir George, for the uh, comments. Um, to that for I am our research. And um, as to my of the of the product, um, as we conducted our initial market research, I think um, uh, that we do have the market for that. Thank you, Sir Go. Um, Sir Lee, medyo po talaga uh, nawala na po si Sir Lee. Uh, Sir, uh, Sir George will just uh, send, uh, will just type in the chat box po yung question nyo for Sir Lee. Uh, mukhang meron po talaga tayong uh, problems with connections. Uh, ganun din po attorney by with uh, Ma'am Cheryl Solano, nawala na po siya. <laughs> okay, sorry po sa ano. Any more question po sa ating evaluators? Meron pa po ba tayong last question? Ang naiwan na lang po sa si Ma'am Lynn. <laughs> Abe na obra. Uh, this is the uh, reality po ng, ng online. <laughs> okay. Wala na po. Okay na po. Sige po. Uh, we have a question uh, from FB Live. Um, do you have data on na uh, effectivity of the product on Napier grass? What is, uh, what is yield? Are you open to partnering and distribution? For This is for uh, Ma'am, for UP Mindanao, for Ma'am Lynn. Ulitin ko po, Ma'am Lynn, do you have the data on effectivity of the product on Napier grass? What is uh, what is the yield? Are you open to partnering and distribu uh, distributorship? Uh, actually po, yung state po ng aming technology ngayon is a laboratory scale, but we are uh, we have a, a proposal to the OST for the upscaling and pilot uh, pilot testing. So, of course, we're open for for partnership, but we are still in the process of upscaling the technology, and it will take. I think our target for I mean, is twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three for the pilot 
pilot testing because I understand from the inventor that running a pilot test is not that, that easy. But we are hoping to have partners in the uh, for to come up with a, a facility because that would be the requirement for the pilot testing. Thank you. Did I answer the question? Okay, uh, ma'am, nasa FB Live po kasi, so, uh, so hopefully po, uh, it, uh, uh, it was answered po. Okay, so um, I think we have to uh, end our Q&A for now. Uh, wala rin po si ma'am uh, Cheryl Sulano. If just in case po, uh, uh, Engineer George and Attorney Bay, may question po for ma'am Sulano, we can uh, type po sa chat box and we'll just forward po. Hopefully, um, makabalik po siya mamaya sa atin, uh, yung connection po niya. Okay, again, maraming marami pong salamat sa ating evaluators, kay Engineer George and kay Attorney Bay. And thank you po sa ating mga uh, technology features. Kay Ma'am Lynn, uh, Buena Obra ng UP Mindanao. Kay Sir Lee, uh, Serot ng CBSC. At kay Ma'am uh, Cheryl uh, Solano um, okay, ng Sursogon State College. Okay, maraming marami pong salamat. Okay, that ends the first six of our technology uh, pictures. And um, medyo maaga po tayo. Okay, so um, we'll now proceed po muna with um, a 10 minutes health break. So dun po sa mga gustong kumuha ng kape. Uh, again, uh, if you have any questions po, uh, you can put it in our chat box sa Zoom or sa FB Live um, dun sa, sa mga ano natin uh, for our uh, first six na technology uh, technology features. And um, I'll just uh, mention po pala um, Sorry po, uh, for Ma'am Lynn, uh, we have po uh, sa chat box po uh, from um, Harvest po, kay, kay Sir Toto Barcelona po, yung cell number po for the UP Lactic, yung contact po. Okay, and uh, please send po yung MSDS and technical specs po at kung FTA registered. Okay, ma'am, pasagot na lang po, um, we'll put it in the chat box po ng ating uh, Zoom. Okay, so thank you everybody for the first part of our program. Um, We'll see you po at 10.50 at after our um, health break. Okay. Again, thank you and see you later.
The Philippines' agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector are full of potential, but it faces big challenges, especially in bringing the technologies to their intended users. To address this issue, the Philippine Technology Transfer Act of 2009 mandated the monitoring of efforts and the effectiveness of the research and development institutions in securing intellectual property protection and pursuing IP commercialization. This resulted in the merging of two planning councils and formed the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, which was formalized on June 22, 2011. As the newly formed council, DOSD Picard was able to assist 16 RDIs and SUCs on IP protection. This resulted in 11 trademarks filed and registered, 23 utility models filed and approved, and 37 patents filed with 7 granted, and the rest still being evaluated by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. While these achievements can be considered remarkable, much more is needed to hasten IP protection and management and technology transfer. In March 2016, DOSD Picard established the DOSD Picard Innovation and Technology Center or the DPITC, which was designed to deliver quality services on intellectual property management and technology commercialization. The old Picamard building was renovated to become the headquarters of the DPITC. In the five years since the establishment of the DPITC, we have trained almost 6,000 researchers, technology transfer officers, and other clients on R&D management and many more. We have strengthened ties and forged new alliances with almost 100 local and international partner institutions. Through the DPITC, we have also established IP and technology business management offices in 26 partner agencies, which now have their own institutional IP policies and technology commercialization protocols. We have also enabled them to file on their own over 1,200 IP applications by capacitating their technology transfer officers and researchers. With the generation of freedom to operate reviews, technology valuations, market studies, and business plans, AANR Technologies were able to satisfy the requirements of the Fairness Opinion Board. Now. We have 17 commercialization agreements with the private sector. We also instituted the DOSD Picard National Agri Aqua Technology Business Incubation Program in 16 ATBIs across the country. This program helps start and develop viable agri businesses and now supports almost 200 new small businesses which in turn have generated over 460 new jobs. DOSD Picard also created the science for the convergence of agriculture and tourism, which promotes technologies in 13 farm tourism areas. The DPITC also boasts of a fully functional DOSD Picard e-library that has catered to almost 3,000 patrons since it opened in April 2020, with an average of two downloads per patron. Initiatives are also being done to organize a network of e-libraries to include library resources from the Council's R&D Regional Consortia. The DPITC is also the venue for the SNT Exhibit and Bazaar. The SNT Exhibit features the major output of Picard's 38 industry strategic S&T programs and highlights the new technologies and innovations that are geared towards the goals of food sufficiency, global competitiveness, poverty alleviation, and environmental sustainability. To complement the S&T exhibits, the S&T Bazaar highlights the technologies and products generated from Picard-assisted projects. These products are also included in the one store, 
an online selling platform developed by DOST. We are very grateful to our partners in the regional consortia for helping us in making the first five years of the DPITC truly meaningful and special. We will continue to strengthen our existing programs and introduce new initiatives to further enhance technology transfer and commercialization. Among this, we are establishing a new unit at the DPITC, the Agri-Aqua Business Hub, in order to solidify our gains in recent years. The DPITC Agri-Aqua Business Hub seeks to position DOSDP card as one of the leading agents of agribusiness development by strengthening the innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem through holistic service offerings to encourage a new generation of entrepreneurs and advance the AANR industries. The hub will serve as a single point of contact to enable enterprise building through the convergence of DOSTP cards initiatives and hand-holding support. Let our DPITC be a glowing testament to the Council's commitment to provide science solution for a vibrant agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector. Okay, welcome back everybody. Okay. I hope um, you were able to grab your coffee or your snacks. Okay, so we will uh, resume um, our technology pitches. But before that, I would just like to announce po, that we would like to assure po, the audiences that we will address the question raised uh, just because we have a uh, limited time, time po dun sa Q and A, so we can cover. Uh, we cannot cover everything po sa program, but you can also email us uh, for any inquiries at ttpd at picard.dost.gov.ph. Again po, that's ttpd at picard.dost.gov.ph. So for any questions po, please email. Okay, so uh, we. We now move on to another set of uh, our SNT creations, and now uh, we have the food products and beverages uh, category. Okay, the first to pitch is uh, the Chevron products and retort uh, pouch. Uh, it's a flavorful uh, Chevron dishes conveniently packed in retort pouches from Don Mariano Marcos State University. Uh, let's hear from uh, Ma'am Maria Victoria Domingo. Sa init, puro. Meat has always had a special place in the Filipino dining table. Pork, beef, and chicken meat are generally consumed on a daily basis and especially so for special occasions such as birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, even career promotions and other celebrations. However, according to the World Health Organization and the Philippine Statistics Authority, the leading cause of death worldwide and in the Philippines is coronary heart disease, which is primarily linked to high levels of glucose, fat, and cholesterol in the blood. This can be attributed to high meat consumption, especially in the Philippines where a great majority of Filipinos love to eat meat, especially pork. Our solution? Introducing the Don Mariano Chevon or goat meat products. Affordable, convenient, safe and quality meat dishes made from a healthier red meat option. Currently available in four variants. The Chevon Pinapaitan, Chevon Sinampalukan, Chevon Sisig, and Chevon Bulgogi. Did you know that Chevon or goat meat has up to 215% less fat and up to 19% less cholesterol than beef, chicken, and pork? The Don Mariano Chevon dishes also passed microbiological testing and were proven to be safe for consumption. They can last from 5 months to 14 months when stored appropriately. Furthermore, since the Chevon dishes are packaged in retortable pouches, the product is easy to open and ready to eat. These are perfect for people on the go or those who would like to eat delectable Chevon dishes without the tedious and sometimes complex process of preparing and cooking goat meat. The products are also affordable at only 200 pesos per 200 gram pouch. 
As to local demand, the total number of goats slaughtered for meat production in the Philippines has been steady for the past five years at an average of 3.2 million heads every year. So who can benefit from our product? Potentially everyone who loves to eat meat. However, with the current production capacity, the primary target market are goat meat consumers in the Ilocos region and Central Luzon. The product also addresses the needs of people who want to practice a healthier lifestyle and those who want to experience a unique but very distinct approach to their favorite meat dishes. Moving forward, export opportunities are also present for Chevron products. In the Asia-Pacific region, potential markets include China, India, Pakistan, Nepal, and Myanmar, and among the Western countries, USA, France, UK, and Germany. As to marketing and sales, the Chevron products can be promoted through various and easily accessible avenues, social media, print media, exhibits and trade fairs, even word-of-mouth advertising. The products may also be sold to diners, restaurants, supermarkets, groceries, and even online. The expected production input costs, operating, and other expenses is about 11 million pesos for the first year, while gross sales is forecasted at 16.5 million for the first year and will reach 24.2 million by year 5 assuming a 10% yearly increase in number of packs sold. With a net profit margin of 35%, the net income is forecasted to range from 5.7 million during the first year to 8.4 million by year 5. This translates to an estimated return on investment of 30% with an initial investment of 4.4 million. The research project on the development of Chevron products started in 2014. And since the project completion in 2016, a total of six utility models on the Chevron products have been registered with IPOFIL which cover Chevron products processing and Chevron dishes composition. In the coming years, the university intends to formally establish the DIMSU AgriAqua Technology Business Incubation and apply for halal certification of the Chevron processing. The project is led by two of our most dynamic faculty members, Professor Anabelia Valdez, creator and innovator, in partnership with Dr. Victoria Malaya, coordinator for the DIMSU ATBI. So what are you waiting for? Join us in our goal of promoting a healthier lifestyle with Chevon. For inquiries, you may contact this number. Invest in Chevon and live like a don. Okay, thank you po, Miss Maria Victoria Domingo. I'd like to live like a don po. <laughs> thank you. So moving on, we have our next uh, technology feature uh, on Gimaras Green Mango Chips. Uh, it's a crispy, sour, vacuum-fried green mango chips made of fresh Gimaras Carabao, Carabao mangoes, no added salt and sugar rich um, with ascorbic acid and beta-carotene that can help uh, boost the immune system. Uh, this will be presented by uh, Sir Adrian Alumbro of the Guimaras State uh, College. If you're an entrepreneur with a passion for food product development, then the Food Innovation Center is the right place for you. Hi, my name is Adrian, a product development specialist at the Western Visayas Food Innovation Center, the hub for R&D in food innovation in Region it has been known for some time that long-term consumption of junk food can be linked to several diseases like obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and even cancer. These facts outline the importance of a healthy diet towards achieving a healthy mind and body. As a part of our mandate, the FIC advocates in the development of nutritious foods that would promote the health and well-being of the Filipino people, especially during this time of the pandemic. We create foods using sophisticated equipment to ensure the quality and safety of the manufactured products. The green mango chips is one of the signature products developed at the FIC. It is made from fresh carabao mangoes fried at temperatures below 100 degrees Celsius 
thereby preserving the sensory as well as the nutritional quality of the chips. It is a healthy product, potentially rich in ascorbic acid and beta-carotene that can help boost the immune system. Moreover, the product is all natural without any added preservatives. For this particular technology, we have done optimization procedures to standardize the quality of the product. We also have done initial acceptability tests and found that the green mango chip was acceptable to most consumers. Moreover, we have filed for a UM application last year to ensure that the technology will be protected. Recently, new opportunities for functional foods and beverages have opened, putting products like the vacuum fried green mango in the spotlight. Given the huge market potential for functional foods in the country, there is no doubt that the green mango chips will find its niche in the local market. This product can be sold in supermarkets, convenience stores, pasalubong centers, and other distribution outlets. Shown here is the breakdown of the production cost of green mango chips. We estimate that the cost of production per day would reach a total of 7,194 pesos, with a huge portion coming from the material and labor costs. For the market share, our objective is to capture at least 5% of the total target market. If this assumption is met, the estimated demand for green mango chips would be about 84,535 packs per month. However, considering the current capacity of the vacuum fryer and the number of batches that can be done in a day, we can only produce a maximum of 7,800 packs per month. This shows that in the real setting, it is possible that the demand could be significantly higher than what we can supply. Nevertheless, realizing the demand of 7,800 packs per month is already a huge opportunity considering the revenues that can be generated. For would-be adopters of this technology, the FIC is willing to provide the technical expertise needed for the business to take off. With our team, we can offer our partners free training or workshops on food safety food packaging, the use of processing equipment relevant to the adopted technology, and product development services should the client decide to make further improvements to the existing technology or create product variants. More importantly, during the actual production, the FIC will allow the technology adopter to have access to the facilities found at the R&D center. All of these will enable our partners to make the most out of their investment without risking too much on their end. For more inquiries about the technology, feel free to give us a call or contact us via email. Join us and become a prime mover of food innovation in the country. Okay, thank you, Sir Adrian Alumbro. That is uh, the Gimeras Green Mango Chips. Okay, our next uh, presenter is on Capo Swan Muscle Bagoong. Kapo bagoong is derived from the swan mussel, or locally known as kapo, an abundant fresh water resource from Sigay Ilocosur. Uh, this will be presented by Ma'am Imari Tolosa, Alosa of uh, the North, North Luzon Philippine State College. Have you ever tried other variety of bagoong other than fish paste? How do you want your condiments for your dishes? Do you want something without preservatives? Or do you want a new aroma? This time, we offer you a unique alternative to fish or shrimp paste. This is Kapo Bagoong. How did everything start? Here's the background. In the municipality of Sigay Sur, a family of big clubs locally known as Kapo exists in the stagnant, non-concrete ponds of fish farmers. Kapo refers to the Nondonta signea or swan muscle. Kapo is an unexploited fresh water produced in the municipality. The locals have not much time of interest for swan mussel due to its texture and inconvenient processes if prepared as a dish. As a solution to this foregoing problem of this fresh water produced, our team came up with the idea of swan mussel Lapoo. Filipinos love spices and condiments, and we, Ilocanos, love to use bagong, which is usually made up of fish or shrimp. 
are being prompted to address this need of the market while maximizing kapo or swan muscle to help the local fish farmers of Sigan. Kapo Bagoong will be offered to the following. First, the product can be offered directly to the households. Second, the product will also be catered to food businesses like restaurants, food stalls, and the like. Third, Kapo Bagoong can also be sold to resellers like Sari Sari stores and supermarkets in order to reach wider market. The idea of Kapo Bagoong has already been tried. A sample product has been made by our team. The team went to the municipality of Sigay to visit a pond and gather swan mussels to be used for the production. The team cleaned and shelled the swan mussels. Fresh meat of the clams was put in a container with proper salt ratio for fermentation. On the first month of the fermentation stage, the following have been observed. On the first week, nothing has changed in terms of color and the aroma remained to have a mud-like smell. On the second week, the color slightly turned brownish and the aroma remained the same. And the third week, the color fully turned into brown like that of the ordinary bagu. On the other hand, in terms of the fermented swan muscle, it achieved its salty-like aroma. It took five to six months to fully ferment the swan mussel and get the desired taste, texture, and color of bagoo. Kampo bagoo is a unique product. The researchers interviewed one of the well-known bagoo makers in the city of Canton, and the following information were gathered about the commercial fish or shrimp bago. First, it has added preservatives and food coloring. And, it has fish odor or too big alag smell. On the other hand, Kapo Bago has the following unique features. It has fresh water growing ingredient. It has no additives and food coloring. And, it has a mouth-watering aroma. On the volume of kapo as the raw material, approximately 85% can be obtained from the two to three barangays of Sigay Alamosir. Launching a business for kapo bagoong will require an estimated project cost of 150,000 pesos to finance all the pre-operating expenses working capital, and fixed assets. A 10% annual increase in all financial projections was used to project income for the first five years. With a projected sale of 330,000 pesos in the first year of operation and projected operating expenses amounting to 168,000 pesos, projected income for the first year of operation is 162,000 pesos. On the second year of operation, projected income is 178,200 pesos. On the third year, income is 196,020 pesos. And on the fourth and fifth year of operation, the business is expected to gain an income of 215,622 pesos and 237,184 pesos and 20 centavos, respectively. The computed selling price for each bottle of Capo Bagoong is 15 pesos. For individual entrepreneurs who will invest in Capo Bagoong business, they need to raise approximately 10,000 pesos as capital. Projected sales for the first month of their operation is 7,500 pesos, meaning sales volume is 500 bucks, with an assumption of 2% increase in sales per month. The entrepreneurs will be able to achieve a return on investment on the fifth month of operation. 
Kapo Pag-uong was made possible with a joint effort of the following members of the team. Mr. Jairus Anthony Vallejos, Mr. Jerry Babsin, Ms. Trisha Gundra, and Mrs. Marife Alvier. Again, this is Kapo Pag-uong, aimed to provide high-quality product, encourage innovation, and maximize the available resources in the community. If you have any queries, contact NLPSC through the following details. Okay. Thank you very much. That's Kapos Juan Masal Bagoong from the North Luzon Philippine State uh, College. Our, uh, also, thank you to our other technology generators from um, the Mar Mar Don Mariano Marcos State University, um, Ma'am Maria Victoria Domingo, and from uh, Guimaras State College, Sir Adrian Alombro. So uh, now we will be, uh, we'll be proceeding to the question and answer uh, portion. Okay, may we request our uh, technology generators to please um, turn on your video? Yeah. Okay, and we also we will be also joined by uh, the Mercato Central Group. Um, let's welcome um, Sir R.J. Ledesma, the co-founder of Mercato Group, uh, with uh, Ma'am Vanessa Ledesma, also the co-founder, and Mr. Uh, Daniel Aguilar, business development um, head uh, for Mer Mercato Live Markets and Cloud uh, Kitchens. Before we ask them to give um, uh, for their questions, uh, we'd like to request um, the group of Mercato Central to just give us a very brief um, background or introduction on who is Mercato Central, sir. Hi, magandang uh, umaga po sa inyo lahat. Magandang umaga po. My name is Ledesma. Uh, I am the co-founder of Mercato Central together with my lovely wife, uh, Vanessa Pastor. And I'm with my business development head, of course, si, uh, Dan Aguilar. Hi, Dan. Kumusta dyan? Uh, bago lahat, gusto kong pasalamat kay uh, Secretary Boyd de la Peña and of course, uh, Attorney Bailoste for inviting us to be part uh, of today's uh, seminar. Now, usually what I do is um, I, I, I talk a lot for GoNegos. I'm one of the accredited GoNegos mentors and I actually uh, travel the country to be able to, to give talks on entrepreneurship. So just a couple of things that I'd like people to keep in mind also while I do the Q&A. No? Um, so Mercato, we are the, the largest uh, outdoor food market here in uh, Metro Manila. Uh, and people usually flock to the market because uh, they're able to get cuisines that they can't find anywhere else. Because the job of myself and Dan is to be able to curate and vet the market to find uh, the most interesting, innovative uh, food finds. So we've literally helped incubate hundreds of uh, small food vendors throughout the 11 year history of, uh, of Mercato Central. But what we really are at heart is what Dan and I call a small food business incubator. We're not just an outdoor food market. The outdoor food market is the result of being a small food business incubator where we get the best uh, food concepts to come uh, on board to the market. So right now, um, uh, what we have in, in Manila is we have uh, we, had the, we had the largest outdoor al fresco food market. So we're safe and socially distanced right now. And if any of you have heard of a uh, cloud kitchen, which is the concept of a, you know, having a shared kitchen facility for several food vendors that is optimized for delivery and takeout, uh, we in Mercato are developing that one as well. And lastly, we are very proud to share with you uh, that together with Dan and Vanessa, we are developing a, uh, and he's a very proud, uh, if anybody is from Cagayan, he's, very, he's proudly from Cagayan, his name is David Almirol of Multisys. Uh, we developed a Mercato app and the app is a app that aggregates micro, uh, micro and small and medium food enterprises, MSMEs like yourselves to be part of the platform. Uh, we aggregate all of you so that you're able to achieve uh, have, have a larger market reach. And uh, we also have last mile delivery fulfillment efforts as part of the app as well. So we're inviting everybody uh, who is in this uh, seminar here right now, who's pitching here right now, you're all invited to, to be part of that platform because eventually, uh, we'll be going nationwide and we're very happy to work with you. We're also happy to be working with uh, our vendors from Go Negosho to do the same thing. Now, just a couple of things, no? um, some tips as we, as we continue this one and as, as I ask questions. One of the biggest things I've learned, though, especially when you're looking for investors for a project, and I work, with a lot, I, learn, I work with a lot of the startup community over here, is that the question that they will always ask you is, 
what problem is your business trying to solve, right? Again, what problem is your business trying to solve? Because oftentimes I see people, they've got really good technology, but they really don't know what sort of problem that they're solving. So you have to figure out what is the problem that you are solving for consumers? Is there an underserved market? Is, there, is your particular product something that you know that they've been looking for, but are there ir- they're, they're something that they are irritated about and they need to find a solution to? Because I often tell people, uh, kung ikaw ay naiirita sa isang bagay at, i- at ibang tao rin ay naiirita sa isang bagay, pag masolve mo dyan, dyan kakikita ng pera. And that's exactly the same thing when it comes to food. Diba? Basically, food is either you, you, uh, you address by, by the biggest basic problems there are quality. Dan, diba? Quality or, or price uh, are, are the biggest considerations or taste uh, are what people really look at when it comes to food. Uh, and the next thing that, that people need to realize is that we keep on talking about the idea of innovation. But the question is, when in, 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 you know, innovation is not all. We can be inventive and innovate, but the component of innovation that needs to be better is this one, diba? Is the commercialization of the innovation. Remember, okay, uh, it wasn't Apple who originally developed the iPad, the technology for the iPad. It was somebody else, but Steve Jobs, he was the one who commercialized the use of, his, of, the, of, the, of the iPod when it became popular, diba? So you might come up with the innovation, but the problem is right now, how good are you at the commercialization of that product? It's something that you have to pay attention to. So again, no? like Lee and Lando said over here, listen, remember, what problem is your business trying to solve? What problem is your... If you're creating a food product or whatever product, that's great. But again, what problem is your technology trying to solve, your food technology trying to solve. And if you're able to solve that one, that, 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 that is one big thing already. Right? Um, if, you're not, if, you, if you're just going to keep on coming up with technologies uh, that are good for food because they're interesting or they're breakthrough, but it doesn't solve a consumer problem, um, that might be, you know, it's hard to get it off the ground. And the last thing I want to stress which is very important, given that you're coming from different parts of the country, which I think is very, very important, is that in many products which I encounter, kasi, they often forget that people are not just buying your food. Remember, they're not just buying your food. They're buying the story behind your food. They want to know is, um, there's several things, Dan and I will often tell you, diba? When, you get, when we sell a food product in the market, we tell them, okay, what um, we tell people, what problem are you trying to solve? After you solve that problem, we tell them, what makes the way that you solve that problem unique and innovative that nobody else can easily copy from you? Yung tawag natin dyan, secret sauce, di ba? Secret sauce ang tawag dyan. Kunyari po, uh, kung kayo po ay gutom at gusto mo ng fast food, pupunta ka sa KFC, sa Kentucky Fried Chicken, bakit ka pupunta dyan? Because may secret sauce sila. Ano secret sauce ng KFC? Hindi lang yung secret sauce ng manok nila, diba? yung 11 secret herbs and spices, kundi yung, ano, yung gravy nila. Yan yung talaga secret sauce nila. Hindi mo makopya yung secret sauce nila. Kung ikaw ay uhaw, anong iinumin mong soft drink? Coca-Cola because there's a secret formulation to that one. We often tell people, when, you're, when they're going to you, what is the secret sauce of your product? What makes it different from others? Pero maliban pa dyan, we ask people, what is the story of your product? And what makes it relevant and meaningful for people to buy it. So, kunyari lang po, I have two coffee beans, diba? two sets of coffee beans. Isang, isang commercial coffee bean, isang bean naman to, galing Cordillera. It was harvested by the Cordillera farmers, and every time that I buy a coffee bean from the Cordillera farmers, it helps build a Lumad school. And then, syempre, bibili ako dito dahil may story yan. And as I was listening to all of you, what I realized is this one, you've got really great technologies, but... What, was, what, what I felt could be, make it even better was that what story is your product trying to create? What makes it meaningful and relevant? Nakita ko green mango chips. I loved it kasi galing gimaras, di ba? So yes, galing gimaras. But your product has to tell the story of why, is it, why are gimaras mangoes superior to the rest of the world? What is it about the soil, the climate, the people? The same thing when it comes to the bagoong, di ba? The muscles, really great story. But remember... Part of the product is part of how are you telling uh, the story of your product, which becomes uh, very, very key in making it commercially viable. Because people, just, remember, 
people, they don't just buy your food. They, they buy the story behind your food. I just go, green mango chips, I can get it anywhere. But why do I want Gimaras green mango chips, diba? Or, or for, the, for the muscles, diba? What makes it mus- what, what makes muscles unique? Itong muscles ito can only be found in this part of the country, their this climate, diba? Pag ibang bansa, when you go to Bang, Thailand, each of their goods tell the provenance kung saan nanggagaling, anong probinsya yung galing produkto na yan, about their specialties. That is my dream for all of you over here that, that people buy the product because uh, they really come uh, from, your, from your province and they can tell a really good story. So, yan na muna. Pasensya, hindi ito naging Q&A, kundi konting lecture po. But this is what I do. It's eh. okay, sir. I really go yeah. out and, 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 and tell these different things over there. Maybe si Dan was here for the whole time. Dan, you've got some inputs and maybe may konting questions ka sa mga tao dito. Yes. Yeah, but that's good. For the, the three points, definitely po. I think they have taken down notes on that. Okay, so we'll proceed with the Q&A. Again, oh, like so we have here the Shabon products, the Gimaras right. Green Mango Chips, and the Swan, bag, uh, um, Swan Muscle Bagoong. Any questions po from Sir Dan, from Ma'am Dan. Vanessa? Oh. Sir yes, Dan, sir. No, uh, I just wanted to mention that we were looking forward to taste testing their products. Aside from your presentations today, uh, we have uh, arranged for the actual taste test of these products to add to the evaluation that you will be having. Uh, mm-hmm. Attorney Bailoste from uh, the uh, IP, he's with IP, uh, IP lawyer, no? so mm-hmm. he's, he's going to send. And we have our own uh, internal uh, score sheet for the taste test uh, to better help you even more uh, mm-hmm. in your preparation for the products. Mm-hmm. So, yes, so we, we look forward to that. Yes, Ma'am Vanessa, we will be uh, arranging that so that the uh, products can be um, sent to you for taste test. And I'm sure um, our technology generators would welcome your feedback. Okay, Sir Daniel, is there any questions po sa ating three um, presenters? Uh, so far, Ma'am, wala naman po Mm-hmm. Okay. The input really for them is, is really, um, I think they're great, but they have to tell, kumbaga pride of, dapat may pride of place ng konte. Mm. I, I like that they are, the technology is specific to the products which can be found in those specific, uh, 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 specific areas. Uh, but, but really, um, I, I'm looking for them to tell that story through the product as well. Because I'm a, that's my that's my background. I'm a marketing guy. I'm really a marketing guy, and we want we want those products to, to grow a bit more. And uh, like like Lily said over here, they go beyond the innovation into the commercialization. Pag walang commercialization yan, bali wala. Um, work a lot with the with with DTI and the packaging. That's what I see is mostly the the make or break. Eh, because uh, our packaging is uh, alam mo pag Thailand sobrang innovative yung kanilang provincially developed products when you see them. Tayo kailangan ng konting ano konting uh, style konting pagka you know uh, when people see the product they're impressed by the by the look and feel of, of how the product i think that's what's, that's what's really key over here and uh, for me i like the product we just have to work a bit more on the on the marketing of the product and, and just to let you know a bit more no um i want dan to share a bit more dan can you share with them the the costings for food lang so they just know our one third one third one third so that more or less uh when they when they start to formulate they know uh what should be a big uh, what should be a good breakdown between uh, utilities cost and labor's cost, food cost, and the margins. Yeah. Well, well basically, sir, uh, we're looking at uh, for the food cost. We're looking at 30 to 32 percent of the total uh, SRP of the the product. Uh, if I may add, sir, uh, like like the the bago the bagoong or the the condiment, maybe we can study also on how to apply on food. Or comfort food or common food that will uh, attract people to to taste the to, to test the the, the condiment as a since it's different from the usual shrimp paste. So maybe we can create the dishes, uh, uh, including or with the incorporation of that particular condiment, because that that alone will sell the condiment. So if you will sell the condiment on a per bottle without the uh, like like selling the food within parang kasama yung paste na yun. So maybe we can create a common uh, like uh, uh, variant or Filipino food na kasama siya. Ano yung lasa niya? So parang 
somehow dun mo rin siya makokommercialize na todo uh, to widen further yung further yung yung innovation ng ng muscles na yun. So parang parang iba yung lasa pag ito yung ginamit mo unlike for the, the common skin paste. So dun din siya magki-click no. In terms of uh, costing kasi if you will sell it, if you will go big. So parang it, I like the innovation, I like the the ano no, aside from the story. Maybe yung yung actual actual taste of the product, actual uh, dishes pagkasama yung yung bagoong yan. So parang kasi unlike unlike the the Gimaras mango chip parang connotation yan agad. Pag binuksan mo yung pack o vacuum pack so syempre lasang mangga agad yan. The texture dun na lang you follow the texture syempre yung lasa. So basically that's it. But for the bagoong ano yung yung uniqueness ng no, no, the, the, the condiment will go will vary pag hinalo mo siya sa pagkain or pag ginawa mo lang kasi siyang uh, like uh, sauce lang siya so maybe you know, medyo short yung ano medyo maliit lang yung i think yung 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 coverage niya medyo maliit but oh. you you will create dishes kasama das the kala may educate uh, dang kala may educate yung yeah. consumer on how to use the product yeah. properly eh yung um, kapo so mas mawawide natin yung market no parang mas uh, mas makokommercialize natin siya and we can sell it higher uh, than 15 pesos kasi mas unique yung lasa pag ito yung hinalo mo o even on a raw raw vegetable sinalo mo siya mas iba yung lasa so dun din sometimes dun yung uh, create ng ano yung suggested retail price ng produkto like the condiment dun mo rin siya ma ano eh, ma, ma makukuha like like hot sauce di ba So different brands vary pero impression nila mas mahal si Tabasco, di ba? So parang uh, I'll tell you the story of Tabasco, no? Condiment lang siya even before. Alam niyo yung spout ng Tabasco, yung pinaka what do you call that sir RJ yung parang fourth fourth ng oh. ng 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 liquor, di ba? Or or alcohol. Oh. Meron siyang fourth doon sa ibabaw. So there are there were Uh, years na talagang walang benta si Tabasco sa hot sauce. Sobrang sarap ni Tabasco uh, compared to other hot sauces. Pero wala siyang benta. Kasi they are, they are selling it at small bottle. And it's mo, even smaller uh, what you call this? Yung butas niya sa ibabaw. So when you when you use it, kukunti yung lumalabas. So yung consumption ng customers sobrang liit. So hindi siya mabenta hanggang ma-expire na yung mga produkto. I don't know in kung sino yung nag-create ng ng mas nilakihan niya yung butas at nilakihan niya yung bottle and then most of the restaurant use Tabasco na. So nag-grow sila ulit, nakabalik si Tabasco and uh, I learned that from Texas chicken before and uh, some other like uh, uh, rock rock and uh, rock uh, restaurant. So nilakihan yung butas ni Tabasco, mas malaki na yung consumption, mas mabilis mo ubus yung bote because masarap po talaga yung hot sauce na yun. So nag-grow yung business ulit, nakabalik sila ulit and uh, siguro yung sales nila mas lumaki talaga. So sure. basically yun, yun din yung input ko no? in, in terms of condiments like this na you create dishes na talagang magiging kakaiba yung lasa ng produkto. So that's the way na ginamit si Tapo. Then later on, mag-grow siya. You can sell it on a higher price. And then, mas maganda yung ano niya. Return of the best. And, and yung, yung food Lampa costing lang, basically, basically food costing lang, last na lang, uh, food costing. Basic food costing, suggested retail price mo, kunyari 100 pesos, one-third, 33 pesos, is the food costs. Basic, that's the, it's a, especially in the business, 33% is your food costs. Di ba? The other 33% are your operating costs, whatever, your capital, your overhead, yung labor that is part of your other 30 your electricity that goes into your other 33%. So that's 66%. The final one third should be your profit margin already. Ideally that's that's what you think about especially in the at least in the restaurant business. One third is food costs, one third is your overhead and hopefully one third kung kaya mo one third that is your profit margin. That's the way to look at the the breakdown of the suggested retail from the suggested retail price standpoint. So as much as possible, that's what you want. That's 
how you know you're making money because nakita ko yung ibang margins dyan medyo maninipis ng konti dahan eh, di ba? Yung mga margin yeah, niya dyan. Uh, maninipis yung mga margin niya dyan. So, you might have to reformulate and sometimes, remember, it's also the perception of the consumer as to how much he wants to pay. That's why Dan was telling you right now, improving the perception of the consumer, improving the story. These are the other marketing intangibles that you need to work on so that people would want to get your product. Like for me, I will get a Gimaras mango versus some other mango. I'll be really willing to pay a premium. Diba? Am I also willing to pay that premium if I get their green mango chips? Uh, yan lang po. Yan lang po sa amin ni Dan. Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you po. Uh, thank you po from uh, Mercato Central. That's a very good very good points po. Yung sabi ni Sir Daniel kanina, may food product na, na associated dyan sa Swan Muscle. Lang pumasok po ka agad sa isip ko, pinakbet ng mga Ilo Ilocano. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, awesome. di ba po yung pinakbet or sausawa ng bagnet <laughs> yeah. na meron pong kamatis. Exactly, exactly po, exactly. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Okay, so thank you po. So we don't have any questions po sa ating uh, three technology generators, but just let me wrap up po no kasi importante po yung three uh, yung mga points na binigay po ng Mercato Central and, and uh, it will be very useful po. Yung una, um, ano po yung problem na sino solve no? So dapat clear yan sa atin. Second po, ano yung uh, ano po yung consumer problem no? Ang second po yung ano po yung story na tinasabi nung uh, nung, nung yung nung produkto natin. Ano yung unique? Ang sabi nga ni Sir RJ, ano yung secret sauce? Ano yung, yung, yung uniqueness ng yung yung product? And importante din po yung commercialization no. So yung innovation, uh, gugulong lang po talaga yan mag mag, mag ano po yan kung may commercialization. And lastly po yung magandang point po na na sinabi po nila sa atin yung costing. Uh, we have to review uh, one third food cost, one third uh, operating uh, cost, and one third profit margin. So I think, uh, Sir RJ, um, our technology generators will be reviewing po yung kanilang kanilang ginagawa. Okay, so thank you very much again to uh, Mercato Central. Uh, Ma'am Vanessa, we'll send you po yung ating uh, food products for, for tasting. Thank you po. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you po, uh, Ma'am Ma 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 Victoria Domingo from... Uh, Mar uh, Don Mariano Marcos uh, State University, kay Sir Adrian Alumbro from Gimaras State um, College, and kay Ma'am Emari Talosa of Northern Luzon Philippine State College. Okay. Salamat po. Okay. Uh, again po, just a reminder po dun sa mga hindi po namin na-entertain na questions. Um, we will, uh, as much as possible po, we will be addressing po yung question po ninyo. Um, pasensya na po, kulang lang po tayo sa, sa oras. Uh, but if you if there are uh, any more questions po you can also email us for in um uh, as a ttpd at picard.dost.gov.ph okay moving moving on to our um last batch for this morning uh ng ating mga uh, food products okay first we have um bottled milk fish oil and fermented shrimp sauce uh, let us hear the story of this flavorful uh, food product from Pangasinan State University. And our technology generator is Sir Christian Tom Tabisola. Are you looking for a primary protein source that is healthy? delectable and affordable then may we share and offer you one innovative product from Pangasinan State University introducing BB oil binago ngang bangus in oil good morning everyone this is Christian Tom Tabisola one of the team members behind the BB oil product and technology consumers have become increasingly health conscious shifting away from red and white meat and actively choosing fish as their main protein source. Because of consumers' health consciousness, we are less likely to eat unhealthy processed foods. People are saturated in seeing a lot of the same types of fish and canned foods. A product that is healthy, affordable, and quality. All natural, no preservatives, with the ability to be potential alternative that can catch the attention of consumers in the wide processed food market is hereby presented. This is BB Oil. Bangus Binaguungan in Oil. 
This is the first bangus commodity in can with new variant using fermented shrimp paste in the market. The BB oil uses the Dagupan bangus, the world's tastiest milkfish, and is very effective with its packaging as canning eliminates heat spores of the product. Heat penetration are conducted to destroy risk organisms. BB oil will be sold 200 grams per bottle with a real price of 70 pesos and a wholesale price of 1,560 for 24 bottles. This is the cheapest in the market but can be assured of its profitability with 21% profit margin from a baseline cost of 54 pesos. The process is based on utility model number 201 5000251 assuring that all processes are safe and well tested. The product is positioned where the needs of its target market will be met. We are anticipating a strong 40% unsought market that is unsatisfied with the current, willing and able to buy our products. Our key direct and indirect competitors are small businesses that is engaged in Bangus value-added production which is ubiquitous in the Gupan City. The value chain network is similar with the competitors. Downstream from the suppliers of raw materials, we will be manufacturers who will sold products to resellers, then finally to consumers. Upstream are for those suppliers for the packaging and logistics, SWOT analysis will answer our frequently asked questions. Number one, you do not want to invest because the production is still considered small scale because we are new in the market and that delimits our market for expansion. BB Oil with technological distinctiveness and knowledge is efficient in production. Number two, you do not want to invest because of fluctuating prices of raw materials and of course because of strong competition. BB Oil is taking advantage of the preference shift from meat to fish due to high prices of meat and healthy product options. BB Oil is quantitatively proven to be financially sound as an investment. The expected profit margin is 21% and a return on investment or ROI is 27%. The break-even point for retail is 6,000 to 60,000 units for the wholesale and an expected less than 3 years of payback for your investment. A good and viable startup investment for 1.1 million capital requirement. Investors will enjoy the following benefits. High profit earnings. Next is a strong support and guidance from network of researchers, a management plan as a springboard in running the business, trainings from pool of experts for sustainability, and continuous innovation and improvement. And the question is, why choose us? First, mataas nakita because of profitable market. Next is patuk sa masa. Due to popularity or familiarity of bangus as a commodity. Maayos na sistema due to product quality, channels and production efficiency. And of course, epektibo at di kalidad na produkto because of the human assets involved. This is definitely the best choice. So come, collaborate and invest with us. Experience the world's tastiest milkfish in bottles. This is BB Oil. Bangus binagoongan in oil. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Christian Tom Tabisola from Pangasinan State University. Okay. Mukhang gusto po naming tikman na po ang BB Oil. Okay. Next, we move on to our next technology. Um, Presenter, it's uh, on uh, mushroom chili garlic sauce, an all-natural food product with an appetizing color, odor, and tingly spicy taste. Best served as an appetizer, sauce, condiment, or side dish that is high in protein and fiber but less carbs. Uh, our technology generator is from South, Southern Luzon State University, uh, Ma'am Nona Nagares. 
Mabuhay! I am Dr. Mana, a food technologist, nutritionist, and professor, one of the crafters of this technology. I will introduce our appetizing and healthy mushroom product, mushroom chili garlic sauce. When one don't consume enough nutrients, the body becomes malnourished. Protein malnourishment is characterized by protein deficiency and PEM. Herbivores need to properly combine plant-based foods to form a complete protein in a meal. Adding protein to diet can be achieved by incorporating plant sources or meat analogs like oyster mushrooms. Another problem is that available condiments nowadays are not nutritious because they have high amounts of fats and cannot be eaten alone. This food product is a combination of oyster mushroom, garlic, hot chili peppers, bell pepper, and a stingless bihani tagged as superfoods because of the nutritional and health benefits they can provide. This product contains in ingredients that will make you feel super. It may bring out beautiful glow and superb health in you. Our business model will provide a healthy and palatable sauce option to generations X and Y and people that belongs to Class A and B through this superfood, Gen X shares 16% of the total population and have the highest spending ability, while Gen Y is 25% of the world population and represents the highest spending generation. These generations opted for a healthy lifestyle, are health conscious, and tends to follow a healthy diet. As well as those people with an income bracket under Class A and B because Healthy lifestyle is common in higher social classes and may invest on extra ingredients that will make their food tastier and healthier. Because of its distinct taste and natural ingredients, it gained popularity and became the best seller product in various exhibits. In fact, last March 9, 11, 2020, at Trinoma Ayala Mall, Mushroom Chili Garlic Sauce won the Best Sausawan Award garnering a score of 97.67% during the SUCS Expo, participated by 51 state universities and colleges from all over the Philippines. This event gave recognition to mushroom chili garlic sauce for its incomparable taste that made some online sellers, restaurant and store owners became interested in selling the product. The process and the product have an IP application filed at IPO field and its brand name has a trademark application too. So we're open for a possibility of licensing our product or a spin-off company. With the above achievements and increasing demand for a mushroom chili garlic sauce, it shows that the product has market potential and may penetrate the global market. The market share for sauces Dressings and condiments in global setting is estimated at $30.5 billion and projected to reach $39.2 billion by year 2027, growing at an annual compound growth rate of 3.6. We will partner with hotels, restaurants, specialty shops, and online sellers to boost our sales. We will reach our consumers through advertisement, social media, and online selling platforms, and participate in product exhibits. The crafters of this superfood believe that for optimal health, protein-rich foods in every meal are still a must, notwithstanding the financial reward this may give. For financial viability, there is a net profit margin of 25.3% on a 5-year sales projection while the return of investment is estimated at 32.27% with a payback period of 2.3 years. Price range of chili sauce or mushroom chili paste costs 175 pesos to 320 pesos, while a 100 gram bottle of this sauce, which is packed with healthy benefits, costs 120 pesos only. It is best partnered with rice, steamed vegetables, fried or grilled chicken and fish, kare-kare and mangoes, and can be served as pasta sauce or salad dressing. 1 million pesos is needed for a one-year operation of producing this healthy sauce mainly for research and innovation, government registrations and recognitions, and market study. 
We bargain offering this healthy and affordable mushroom chili garlic sauce. Reach us to the following contact details. Hey, thank you very much, um, Doc Nona Nagares from the Southern, uh, Southern Luzon State University on uh, their mushroom chili garlic sauce. Now we move on to our third uh, technology, the processed fish in pili pulp oil. Let us taste virtually this processed fish in pili pulp oil from Catanduanes State University. Uh, our technology generator is uh, Ma'am Maria Monet Tugay. Good day, everyone. Welcome to the technology pitching on processed fish and pili pulp oil presented by the Katsanduan State University main campus. Pili fruit is one of the most important nut producing species in an indigenous fruit in the Philippines. Oil extracted from its pulp is known as pili pulp oil. Pili pulp oil is very similar to olive oil in its chemical and nutritional properties but it contains more beta-carotene and carotenoids that makes it more nutritious than olive oil. It is an inexpensive alternative to olive oil since its source is just a waste material in processing pili nut products. For these reasons, a gourmet known as processed fish in pili pulp oil was put into reality. Processed fish and pili pulp oil, a more nutritious and more affordable bottle product made from oil which is locally extracted from indigenous source characterized with more appetizing flavor and aroma that utilizes a locally sourced fish species such as Indian sardines and tuna. It is comprised of fish, salt, water, carrot, pickled cucumber, peppercorn, laurel leaves, chili pepper, and pili pulp oil. Proximate analysis results conducted by DOST Regional Office No. 5 shows that processed fish in pili pulp oil contains 71.38% moisture, 3.71% ash, 1.56% total fat, 20.80% protein, 2.55% carbohydrates, 0.002% iron, 0.382% calcium, and 0.839% soju. This technology, processed fish and pili pulp oil, is targeting health-conscious working individuals aging from 15 to 64 years old as potential customers. The total gainful workers in Birak Katsanzoanes aging from 15 to 64 years old comprise the population of around 36%. With this percentage, about 26,693 consumers are expected to buy the product. The business can be started and operated within a year with an initial investment of 2.2 million pesos. A lowest selling price of 85 pesos only per bottle an estimated amount of 2,611,200 pesos for an annual sales revenue can be acquired. This is equivalent to 492,883 pesos of annual net profit. Achieving these numbers, return on investment is 22.4% per year. The net present value of this technology is equivalent to 271,269.33 pesos. Processed fish and pili pulp oil is an all-natural food product made from oil extracted from indigenous fruit. Processed fish and pili pulp oil is an all-natural food product made from oil extracted from indigenous fruit and locally sourced fish species. It is a high-end product in a form of gourmet, but with much cheaper price of only 85 pesos per bottle. It is a very fascinating food product that once consumed will leave an intriguing, unique and satisfying flavor to customers that will make them buy for more. As compared with other existing products, it offers more nutritional health benefits because it contains significantly higher amount of carbohydrates, proteins, and iron, and lower amount of fats in soju. 
It also contains higher amount of carotenoids and beta-carotene. Based on many studies conducted, beta-carotene and carotenoids are very important antioxidants that can help prevent cancer. For interested participants, you may contact us on the following details. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma'am Maria Monet, too, guys. So that is our pro uh, processed fish in Philipop oil. Okay, so thank you sa ating tatlong um, technology generators. Um, maybe we invite you to open your camera so we can proceed with the Q&A. And we would also like to invite again um, our um, evaluators from Mercato Central, so Sir RJ, Ma'am Vanessa, and Sir Daniel, to please also um, open po yung inyong mga videos so we can... Um, yeah, for any uh, questions po sa ating tatlong presenter. Again, that's the bottled milkfish oil and fermented uh, shrimp um, sauce and uh, the mushroom chili garlic sauce and the processed um, fish in Philipop oil. Okay. And dito pa po ba sila, ano, Sir Daniel, Sir RJ, and Ma'am Vanessa? Ah, okay. Mm -mm. So, sir, may, uh, from Mercato Central, may we invite you po to open your um, videos. Uh, okay, while waiting po siguro from, uh, from Mercato Central to um, turn on their video, we'll just entertain po some questions from FB Live. Okay, so first question po kay, para kay Sir uh, Tom. Um, how much will be the investment capital in BB Oil Bangus from Ryan Lirios uh, Katiwalaan? Uh, hello po. Magandang umaga po, Sir Ryan. Uh, for our investment cost for BB Oil, uh, Bangus binago nga in oil, kailangan po natin ng 1.1 million. Yung 1.1 million po will cover all of the raw materials uh, for the operation kasama na po ang machineries and equipment plus the technology po. So yun po, Sir, 1.1 million po. Maraming pong salamat, Sir. Okay. So 1.1 million ang um, investment. Okay. Um, any question po from our um, evaluators? Nalaman po, but uh, just again, the, the same advice I gave but applies here as well. Okay. So... Uh, thank you po, Sir RJ. Again, um, let's recap that. Ano nga ba yung advice kanilang nila, ano, Sir, no? So, yung tell a story, yung commercialization, yung innovation natin to commercialization, yung, ano, yung unique, um, uniqueness, ano, secret recipe, at saka yung ating one-third, 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 no? Yung, yung sa profit yeah. cost natin. Okay. Um, we have uh, one more question here for uh, process uh, fish in Philipop oil. Uh, how can a person buy this technology to generate revenue and make a profit? Ma'am, naka-mute. Pa-unmute, ma'am, ang mic. Okay, thank you po. Ay, ma'am, pwede kong paulit ng question. Okay, how can a person buy this technology to generate revenue and make a profit? Ulitin yung ko question, po ba? Ah, hindi ko po ma'am, hindi ko po naintindihan masyado yung question ma'am. Uh -oh. Paano po? Uh -oh. paano, do, paano po ang isang tao? Advice nyo po kung paano po ang isang tao makakabili nitong technology na to para makapag-generate siya ng revenue and profit. Okay po. So kung interested po kayo sa product, pwede nyo pong, uh, pwede nyo po akong makontak uh, 0919-8563327. So, Pwede po tayong mag-usap regarding po sa, sa pag-manufacture po ng product. And uh, very much willing po kami for partnership. Just in case po, uh, gusto niyo pong i-produce um, po yung product po. Okay. So open po ang Katsu for a partnership sa kanilang process fish in Philipop Oil. So you can contact them. Um, so kung, kung pwede ilagay dun sa chat box or uh, sa video or you can contact po TTPD uh, for, for, um, for their contact address. Okay? So mukhang wala na po tayong questions. 
uh, para sa ating last um, batch ng ating technology generators uh, this morning. Again, maraming marami pong salamat kay Christian Tom Tabisola. Uh, ang pinresent po niya ay ang bottled milk fish oil and permitted Maraming salamat po, ma'am. Okay. Um, and then, um, si ma'am... Um, Nona Nagares from Southern Luzon State University, mushroom chili garlic sauce. Thank you po. And then si Ma'am Mar uh, Maria Manet to guy the processed fish in Philly Pop Oil. Marami pong salamat sa inyong tatlo. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, nagutom na po ba kayo? <laughs> Kasi po di ba anim na uh, food products po yung pinresent na yan. Okay, so but before we let you go for for lunch po, uh, again just a reminder po we would like to assure the audience ko kung may mga questions, uh, please email us at um, ttpd@picard.dost.gov.ph. So thank you everyone. Thank you uh, technology pitchers. Um, and potential takers. Thanks to our evaluators, si Attorney Bay, si Engineer Go, uh, ang Mercato Central, si Sir RJ, Ma'am Vanessa, and Sir Daniel. And of course, our technology pitch head, si Dr. Uh, Lily Ann Lando. Um, this is our morning session for this two-day uh, technology pitching event. Uh, we will be breaking now for lunch. We will resume our technology pitching at 1.30 p.m. Uh, so see you later and enjoy your, your lunch. But before that, um, we will be showing you, um, if you are interested uh, in the technologies that were presented earlier on, uh, on the next step towards uh, commercialization. So thank you very much and we'll see you at 1.30. Enjoy your lunch.
You know how it goes. Man eats chicken, and chicken eats worm. But what happens when worm eats chicken? Internal parasites are a major problem in the production of native chickens, causing severe diarrhea and high mortality in poultry, as well as high economic losses for farmers. Commercial dewormers are too expensive for native chicken producers and can make parasites resistant to drugs, rendering it ineffective. As a solution, Gape State University, in collaboration with DOST Picard, developed the botanical dewormer for native chickens. Formulated with powered betel nut and ipil ipil, the botanical dewormer for native chickens is a cheap source of anthelminitics that is effective in treating and controlling roundworms, such as the common large roundworm common threadworms, and sequel worm in native chickens. The botanical dewormer for native chickens complements commercially available dewormers, helping build a stable supply of native chickens for the country. With the botanical dewormer for native chickens, roundworms won't get to our chickens. Brought to you by Capi State University with DOSD Picard and DOSD Tapi. Let it grow, let it grow, and with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer. We can let crops grow and help Filipino farmers. Developed by the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, in collaboration with DOST Picard, Fertigrow uses the inherent properties of nano fertilizers, releasing nitrogen at a controlled pace and over a greater surface area for a higher absorption rate, a more cost-effective and labor-friendly replacement for fertilizer that helps minimize farming costs while helping increase yield. Fertigrow can be used on various crops such as rice, corn, vegetables, sugarcane, coffee, cacao, and banana. The process of applying Fertigrow to crops is the same as conventional fertilizers and is available in three variants, nanopotassium, nanophosphorus, and nanonitrogen. Let crops grow with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer. Brought to you by the University of the Philippines Los Baños. With DOST Picard and DOST Tapi. They have the power to revolutionize industries. And with funding from DOST Picard, new technologies are making their way into the mainstream, ready to make an impact on the world. The DOST TAPI Market Matching Project prepares them to live up to their full potential. Get to know one of the new technologies presenting microalgal paste. This is a larval fish, one of the many aquaculture species that feed on microalgae. Before they can be harvested by fish farmers, they need the right food to grow. Microalgal paste from UP Visayas is an instant feed and an alternative to on-site algal culture. Easy to apply and can be provided to the stock anytime.
microalgal paste is the solution when rations of live algae are insufficient. Now, larval fish and other aquaculture organisms have the food they need to grow and thrive. Thanks to microalgal paste. The Philippines' agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector are full of potential, but it faces big challenges, especially in bringing the technologies to their intended users. To address this issue, the Philippine Technology Transfer Act of 2009 mandated the monitoring of efforts and the effectiveness of the research and development institutions in securing intellectual property protection and pursuing IP commercialization. This resulted in the merging of two planning councils and formed the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, which was formalized on June 22, 2011. As the newly formed council, DOSD Picard was able to assist 16 RDIs and SUCs on IP protection. This resulted in 11 trademarks filed and registered, 23 utility models filed and approved, and 37 patents filed with 7 granted, and the rest still being evaluated by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. While these achievements can be considered remarkable, 
Much more is needed to hasten IP protection and management and technology transfer. In March 2016, DOSD Picard established the DOSD Picard Innovation and Technology Center or the DPITC, which was designed to deliver quality services on intellectual property management and technology commercialization. The old Picamard building was renovated to become the headquarters of the DPITC. In the five years since the establishment of the DPITC, we have trained almost 6,000 researchers, technology transfer officers, and other clients on R&D management and many more. We have strengthened ties and forged new alliances with almost 100 local and international partner institutions. Through the DPITC, we have also established IP and technology business management offices in 26 partner agencies, which now have their own institutional IP policies and technology commercialization protocols. We have also enabled them to file on their own over 1,200 IP applications by capacitating their technology transfer officers and researchers. With the generation of freedom to operate reviews, technology valuations, market studies, and business plans, AANR Technologies were able to satisfy the requirements of the Fairness Opinion Board. Now, we have 17 commercialization agreements with the private sector. We also instituted the DOSD Picard National Agri Aqua Technology Business Incubation Program in 16 ATBIs across the country. This program helps start and develop viable agribusinesses and now supports almost 200 new small businesses, which in turn have generated over 460 new jobs. DOSD Picard also created the science for the convergence of agriculture and tourism, which promotes technologies in 13 farm tourism areas. The DPITC also boasts of a fully functional DOSD Picard e-library that has catered to almost 3,000 patrons since it opened in April 2020, with an average of two downloads per patron. Initiatives are also being done to organize a network of e-libraries to include library resources from the Council's R&D Regional Consortia. The DPITC is also the venue for the SNT Exhibit and Bazaar. The SNT Exhibit features the major output of Picard's 38 industry strategic SNT programs and highlights the new technologies and innovations that are geared towards the goals of food sufficiency, global competitiveness, poverty alleviation, and environmental sustainability. To complement the SNT exhibits, the SNT Bazaar highlights the technologies and products generated from Picard assisted projects. These products are also included in the One Store, an online selling platform developed by DOST. We are very grateful to our partners in the regional consortia for helping us in making the first five years of the DPITC truly meaningful and special. We will continue to strengthen our existing programs and introduce new initiatives to further enhance technology transfer and commercialization. Among this, we are establishing a new unit at the DPITC, the Agri-Aqua Business Hub, in order to solidify our gains in recent years. The DPITC Agri-Aqua Business Hub seeks to position DOST Picard as one of the leading agents of agribusiness development by strengthening the innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem through holistic service offerings to encourage a new generation of entrepreneurs and advanced AANR industries. The hub will serve as a single point of contact to enable enterprise building through the convergence of DOST Picard's initiatives and hand-holding support. Let our DPITC be a glowing testament to the Council's commitment to provide science solution for a vibrant agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector.
how it goes. Man eats chicken, and chicken eats worm. But what happens when worm eats chicken? Internal parasites are a major problem in the production of native chickens, causing severe diarrhea and high mortality in poultry, as well as high economic losses for farmers. Commercial dewormers are too expensive for native chicken producers and can make parasites resistant to drugs, rendering it ineffective. As a solution, Capit State University, in collaboration with DOST Picard, developed the botanical dewormer for native chickens. Formulated with powered betel nut and ipil ipil, the botanical dewormer for native chickens is a cheap source of anthelminitics that is effective in treating and controlling roundworms, such as the common large roundworm common threadworms, and sequel worm in native chickens. The botanical dewormer for native chickens complements commercially available dewormers, helping build a stable supply of native chickens for the country. With the botanical dewormer for native chickens, roundworms won't get to our chickens. Brought to you by Capi State University with DOSD Picard and DOSD Tapi. Let it grow, let it grow, and with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer. We can let crops grow and help Filipino farmers. Developed by the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. In collaboration with DOST Picard, Fertigrow uses the inherent properties of nano fertilizers, releasing nitrogen at a controlled pace and over a greater surface area for a higher absorption rate, a more cost-effective and labor-friendly replacement for fertilizer that helps minimize farming costs while helping increase yield. Fertigrow can be used on various crops such as rice, corn, vegetables, sugarcane, coffee, cacao, and banana. The process of applying Fertigrow to crops is the same as conventional fertilizers and is available in three variants, nanopotassium, nanophosphorus, and nanonitrogen. Let crops grow with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer. Brought to you by the University of the Philippines Los Baños. With DOST Picard and DOST Tapi. They have the power to revolutionize industries. And with funding from DOST Picard, New technologies are making their way into the mainstream, ready to make an impact on the world. The DOST TAPI Market Matching Project prepares them to live up to their full potential. Get to know one of the new technologies presenting Microalgal Paste. This is a larval fish, one of the many aquaculture species that feed on microalgae. Before they can be harvested by fish farmers, they need the right food to grow. Microalgal paste from UP Visayas is an instant feed and an alternative to on-site algal culture. Easy to apply and can be provided to the stock anytime.
Microalgal paste is the solution when rations of live algae are insufficient. Now, larval fish and other aquaculture organisms have the food they need to grow and thrive. Thanks to Microalgal paste. The Philippines' agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector are full of potential, but it faces big challenges, especially in bringing the technologies to their intended users. To address this issue, the Philippine Technology Transfer Act of 2009 mandated the monitoring of efforts and the effectiveness of the research and development institutions in securing intellectual property protection and pursuing IP commercialization. This resulted in the merging of two planning councils and formed the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, which was formalized on June 22, 2011. As the newly formed council, DOSD Picard was able to assist 16 RDIs and SUCs on IP protection. This resulted in 11 trademarks filed and registered, 23 utility models filed and approved, and 37 patents filed with 7 granted, and the rest still being evaluated by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. While these achievements can be considered remarkable, much more is needed to hasten IP protection and management and technology transfer. In March 2016, DOSD Picard established the DOSD Picard Innovation and Technology Center or the DPITC, which was designed to deliver quality services on intellectual property management and technology commercialization. The old Picamard building was renovated to become the headquarters of the DPITC. In the five years since the establishment of the DPITC, we have trained almost 6,000 researchers, technology transfer officers, and other clients on R&D management and many more. We have strengthened ties and forged new alliances with almost 100 local and international partner institutions. Through the DPITC, we have also established IP and technology business management offices in 26 partner agencies, which now have their own institutional IP policies and technology commercialization protocols. We have also enabled them to file on their own over 1,200 IP applications by capacitating their technology transfer officers and researchers. With the generation of freedom to operate reviews, technology valuations, market studies, and business plans, AANR Technologies were able to satisfy the requirements of the Fairness Opinion Board. Now. We have 17 commercialization agreements with the private sector. We also instituted 
the DOST Picard National Agri Aqua Technology Business Incubation Program in 16 ATBIs across the country. This program helps start and develop viable agri businesses and now supports almost 200 new small businesses, which in turn have generated over 460 new jobs. DOST Picard also created the science for the convergence of agriculture and tourism, which promotes technologies in 13 farm tourism areas. The DPITC also boasts of a fully functional DOST Picard e-library that has catered to almost 3,000 patrons since it opened in April 2020, with an average of two downloads per patron. Initiatives are also being done to organize a network of e-libraries to include library resources from the Council's R&D Regional Consortia. The DPITC is also the venue for the SNT Exhibit and Bazaar. The SNT Exhibit features the major output of Picard's 38 industry strategic SNT programs and highlights the new technologies and innovations that are geared towards the goals of food sufficiency, global competitiveness, poverty alleviation, and environmental sustainability. To complement the SNT exhibits, the SNT Bazaar highlights the technologies and products generated from Picard assisted projects. These products are also included in the One Store, an online selling platform developed by DOST. We are very grateful to our partners in the regional consortia for helping us in making the first five years of the DPITC truly meaningful and special. We will continue to strengthen our existing programs and introduce new initiatives to further enhance technology transfer and commercialization. Among this, we are establishing a new unit at the DPITC, the Agri-Aqua Business Hub, in order to solidify our gains in recent years. The DPITC Agri-Aqua Business Hub seeks to position DOST Picard as one of the leading agents of agribusiness development by strengthening the innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem through holistic service offerings to encourage a new generation of entrepreneurs and advance the AANR industries. The hub will serve as a single point of contact to enable enterprise building through the convergence of DOST Picard's initiatives and hand-holding support. Let our DPITC be a glowing testament to the Council's commitment to provide science solution for a vibrant agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector.
how it goes. Man eats chicken, and chicken eats worm. But what happens when worm eats chicken? Internal parasites are a major problem in the production of native chickens, causing severe diarrhea and high mortality in poultry, as well as high economic losses for farmers. Commercial dewormers are too expensive for native chicken producers and can make parasites resistant to drugs, rendering it ineffective. As a solution, Capiz State University, in collaboration with DOST Picard, developed the botanical dewormer for native chickens. Formulated with powered betel nut and ipil ipil, the botanical dewormer for native chickens is a cheap source of anthelminitics that is effective in treating and controlling roundworms, such as the common large roundworm common threadworms, and sequel worm in native chickens. The botanical dewormer for native chickens complements commercially available dewormers, helping build a stable supply of native chickens for the country. With the botanical dewormer for native chickens, roundworms won't get to our chickens. Brought to you by Capi State University with DOSD Picard and DOSD Tapi. Let it grow, let it grow, and with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer. We can let crops grow and help Filipino farmers. Developed by the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, in collaboration with DOST Picard, Fertigrow uses the inherent properties of nano fertilizers, releasing nitrogen at a controlled pace and over a greater surface area for a higher absorption rate, a more cost-effective and labor-friendly replacement for fertilizer that helps minimize farming costs while helping increase yield. Fertigrow can be used on various crops such as rice, corn, vegetables, sugarcane, coffee, cacao, and banana. The process of applying Fertigrow to crops is the same as conventional fertilizers and is available in three variants, nanopotassium, nanophosphorus, and nanonitrogen. Let crops grow with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer, brought to you by the University of the Philippines Los Baños. With DOST Picard and DOST Tapi. They have the power to revolutionize industries, and with funding from DOST Picard, New technologies are making their way into the mainstream, ready to make an impact on the world. The DOST TAPI Market Matching Project prepares them to live up to their full potential. Get to know one of the new technologies presenting microalgal paste. This is a larval fish, one of the many aquaculture species that feed on microalgae. Before they can be harvested by fish farmers, they need the right food to grow. Microalgal paste from UP Visayas is an instant feed and an alternative to on-site algal culture. Easy to apply and can be provided to the stock anytime.
Microalgal paste is the solution when rations of live algae are insufficient. Now, larval fish and other aquaculture organisms have the food they need to grow and thrive. Thanks to Microalgal paste. The Philippines' agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector are full of potential, but it faces big challenges, especially in bringing the technologies to their intended users. To address this issue, the Philippine Technology Transfer Act of 2009 mandated the monitoring of efforts and the effectiveness of the research and development institutions in securing intellectual property protection and pursuing IP commercialization. This resulted in the merging of two planning councils and formed the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, which was formalized on June 22, 2011. As the newly formed council, DOSD Picard was able to assist 16 RDIs and SUCs on IP protection. This resulted in 11 trademarks filed and registered, 23 utility models filed and approved, and 37 patents filed with 7 granted, and the rest still being evaluated by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. While these achievements can be considered remarkable, much more is needed to hasten IP protection and management and technology transfer. In March 2016, DOSD Picard established the DOSD Picard Innovation and Technology Center or the DPITC, which was designed to deliver quality services on intellectual property management and technology commercialization. The old Picamard building was renovated to become the headquarters of the DPITC. In the five years since the establishment of the DPITC, we have trained almost 6,000 researchers, technology transfer officers, and other clients on R&D management and many more. We have strengthened ties and forged new alliances with almost 100 local and international partner institutions. Through the DPITC, we have also established IP and technology business management offices in 26 partner agencies, which now have their own institutional IP policies and technology commercialization protocols. We have also enabled them to file on their own over 1,200 IP applications by capacitating their technology transfer officers and researchers. With the generation of freedom to operate reviews, technology valuations, market studies, and business plans, AANR Technologies were able to satisfy the requirements of the Fairness Opinion Board. Now, we have 17 commercialization agreements with the private sector. We also instituted the DOSD Picard 
National Agri Aqua Technology Business Incubation Program in 16 ATBIs across the country. This program helps start and develop viable agri businesses and now supports almost 200 new small businesses, which in turn have generated over 460 new jobs. DOST Picard also created the science for the convergence of agriculture and tourism, which promotes technologies in 13 farm tourism areas. The DPITC also boasts of a fully functional DOST Picard e-library that has catered to almost 3,000 patrons since it opened in April 2020, with an average of two downloads per patron. Initiatives are also being done to organize a network of e-libraries to include library resources from the Council's R&D Regional Consortium. The DPITC is also the venue for the SNT Exhibit and Bazaar. The SNT Exhibit features the major output of Picard's 38 industry strategic SNT programs and highlights the new technologies and innovations that are geared towards the goals of food sufficiency, global competitiveness, poverty alleviation, and environmental sustainability. To complement the SNT exhibits, the SNT Bazaar highlights the technologies and products generated from Picard assisted projects. These products are also included in the One Store, an online selling platform developed by DOST. We are very grateful to our partners at the Regional Consortia for helping us in making the first five years of the DPITC truly meaningful and special. We will continue to strengthen our existing programs and introduce new initiatives to further enhance technology transfer and commercialization. Among this, we are establishing a new unit at the DPITC, the Agri-Aqua Business Hub, in order to solidify our gains in recent years. The DPITC Agri-Aqua Business Hub seeks to position DOST Picard as one of the leading agents of agribusiness development by strengthening the innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem through holistic service offerings to encourage a new generation of entrepreneurs and advance the AANR industries. The hub will serve as a single point of contact to enable enterprise building through the convergence of DOST Picard's initiatives and hand-holding support. Let our DPITC be a glowing testament to the Council's commitment to provide science solution for a vibrant agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector.
na.
it goes. Man eats chicken, and chicken eats worm. But what happens when worm eats chicken? Internal parasites are a major problem in the production of native chickens, causing severe diarrhea and high mortality in poultry, as well as high economic losses for farmers. Commercial dewormers are too expensive for native chicken producers and can make parasites resistant to drugs, rendering it ineffective. As a solution, Capit State University, in collaboration with DOST Picard, developed the botanical dewormer for native chickens. Formulated with powered betel nut and ipil ipil, the botanical dewormer for native chickens is a cheap source of anthelminitics that is effective in treating and controlling roundworms, such as the common large roundworm common threadworms, and sequel worm in native chickens. The botanical dewormer for native chickens complements commercially available dewormers, helping build a stable supply of native chickens for the country. With the botanical dewormer for native chickens, roundworms won't get to our chickens. Brought to you by Capi State University with DOSD Picard and DOSD Tapi. Let it grow, let it grow, and with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer. We can let crops grow and help Filipino farmers. Developed by the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, in collaboration with DOST Picard, Fertigrow uses the inherent properties of nano fertilizers, releasing nitrogen at a controlled pace and over a greater surface area for a higher absorption rate, a more cost-effective and labor-friendly replacement for fertilizer that helps minimize farming costs while helping increase yield. Fertigrow can be used on various crops such as rice, corn, vegetables, sugarcane, coffee, cacao, and banana. The process of applying Fertigrow to crops is the same as conventional fertilizers and is available in three variants, nanopotassium, nanophosphorus, and nanonitrogen. Let crops grow with Fertigrow, the controlled release nano fertilizer. Brought to you by the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. With DOST Picard and DOST Tapi. They have the power to revolutionize industries. And with funding from DOST Picard, New technologies are making their way into the mainstream, ready to make an impact on the world. The DOST TAPI Market Matching Project prepares them to live up to their full potential. Get to know one of the new technologies presenting microalgal paste. This is a larval fish, one of the many aquaculture species that feed on microalgae. Before they can be harvested by fish farmers, they need the right food to grow. Microalgal paste from UP Visayas is an instant feed and an alternative to on-site algal culture. Easy to apply and can be provided to the stock anytime.
Microalgal paste is the solution when rations of live algae are insufficient. Now, larval fish and other aquaculture organisms have the food they need to grow and thrive. Thanks to Microalgal paste. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, may we have your kind attention, please? We are about to begin. We are requesting everyone to get ready because uh, we will be starting our program in five minutes. Thank you.
Once again, magandang hapon po. Good afternoon, everyone. We hope good that afternoon. you had a good afternoon po. You have. I. We hope you had a great lunch. Okay. Again, we welcome you. Uh, uh, all the technology pitchers and our potential technology takers to the afternoon session of our technology pitch day. Okay. To start, uh, let me uh, acknowledge our evaluator for this afternoon. Uh, we have Professor Matthew Escovido, who will evaluate the presentations from this afternoon session. He is the chair of the Subcommittee of Technology Innovations of the Management Association of the Philippines and an uh, adjunct faculty of the Asian Institute of Management. Um, he has an educational background on PhD in physics, a candidate from uh, University of the Philippines, Master of Science, Mechanical Engineering. He is a Mambusha Scholar, Toyohashi University of Technology, Japan, Master of System Design and Management, uh, a PAEF Scholar. I, uh, also have a Massachusetts Institute uh, of Technology, USA, and Bachelor of Science in Physics. He was even awarded Best Undergraduate Thesis uh, and a DOSD Scholar from the University of the Philippines. Um, aside from Sir Matt, we also have, uh, again, the group from uh, Mercato Central. Um, I think uh, if we have still um, RJ and Vanessa Ledesma, uh, Sir Daniel and Ma'am Chris. Uh, okay. Mercato Central is the destination lifestyle food market that delivers a wide variety of great and unique tasting food, organic pastries and beverage food that is one of a kind. Okay, welcome po sa ating mga evaluators. Uh, let us continue to hear our technology pictures under the food uh, products and uh, beverages category. Okay. The first is, um, the product is uh, Okara Coco Nuggets. It's a delicious nuggets produced from scrape um, young coconut meat or cocos nocifera and soybean glacine max pulp or locally known as Okara. From Dabo Oriental State College of Science and Technology, uh, let's welcome Ma'am Sheryl Bautista. Innovation is the practical application of concepts that result in the launch of new products or services or a change in the way such goods or services are offered. A great innovative day to everyone! Presenting now is the IPTBM office of the Davao Oriental State University. Soy pulp or okara, a byproduct of soybean, scientifically known as glycine max L, are utilized as feeds for domestic animals and as fertilizers. Most of it, however, is discarded as industrial waste. Coconut is locally known as lubi or nyong, scientifically known as cocos nocifera. It is highly nutritious and rich in fiber, vitamins, and minerals and has a very high production in the province of Davao Oriental and is one of the main sources of the farmer's income. In order for the farmers to gain an income, coconut must undergo a labor-intensive process, the copra processing, which over the years is underpriced. An idea of processing soy pulp into food products mixed with coconut meat is due to the following reasons. Neglected value of soy pulp or okara as food product provides simple and practical technology to small-scale farmers and provide income-generating opportunity to small-scale farmers. Okara mixed with coconut Paired with its vision of utilizing such byproducts as food products and providing solutions to the financial problem of the small scale farmers, Okara Coca Nuggets has come into its creation. What are our product advantages? Foods and nutrition may be affected by culture with respect to different beliefs within the culture. Thus, Okara Coca Nuggets is processed with consideration of the different culture. This new technology will provide our farmers, especially those who are engaged in soybean and coconut farming, a simple way of processing and will provide additional income by way of making it as their small-scale business enterprise. Our product is 100% vegetarian. Why? Because its ingredients are soybean pulp, coconut, pepper, among others, and most especially its maker is an advocate of healthy and nutritious foods. Who are our target markets? First on the list are those who are non-pork eaters. 
Second are those health-conscious individuals. And third are our local entrepreneurs. Since the product is in its introductory phase, the product has not yet mass-produced and commercialized. With this, the following financial computations are presented with an initial investment of 78,630.86, a gross profit in a month of 24,269.14, a return on investment of 30.48% in a payback period of 3.28, equivalent to 3 months, 1 week, and 6 days. Further, the product is priced at 15 pesos per pack. Since the product is not yet commercialized, our first move towards commercializing of Parak Coca Nuggets is the reapplication to the product's utility model at Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines initiated last October 16, 2020. Of Kara Coca Nuggets, we pants with the other nuggets available in the market because of its being a calorie protein source product due to its main ingredients, the Kara and Coconut. Venturing into enterprise with Okara Coca Nuggets is very affordable and economically viable because all of the main ingredients are available in the farmer's backyard. And last but not the least, it is very natural since the ingredients used are all natural and not artificial. The maker is a faculty from the Institute of Agriculture and Life Sciences of the Davao Oriental State University teaching Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness Management in the name of Ms. Jenny A. Nicolas, devoted herself to discover and introduce new innovative technology to the province of Davao Oriental and beyond. Thank you and have a good day. Remember, if you don't want meat, try to eat our Okara Coca Nuggets. Okay, thank you. So remember to eat Okara Coco Nuggets. Okay, thank you po, Ma'am Sheryl from Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology. Okay, so moving on. Um, so from Okara Coco Nuggets, we now move to Powdered Bagoong. Okay, Powdered Bagoong is an um, SNT creation offering a new variety of convenience from our all-time favorite Bagoong. Uh, this will be presented by Sir uh, Leandro Dalhag from the Batangas State University. Bagoong Powder, your gourmet quality condiment. When it comes to culture and tradition, each country has its own qualities, making them to stand out from the others especially in terms of food which highlights our Filipino culture. One of the most popular province in the Philippines is Batangas, which offers delectable goods which are surely incomparable to the like. Bagoong is commonly used as salt replacement and flavoring agent for different dishes is considered as one of Filipino favorites. It is made from fermented fish known for its fall odor but offers a unique taste. However, Traditional bagoong is usually packed in bottles with little solids and is quite messy to handle. In addition, they are packaged heavily, requiring bigger space that demands for higher fail rate. Traveling internationally or domestically with bagoong is difficult and creates a big problem. Also, as the product is in its liquid form, food safety issues will be a primary concern. With this, may I present to you Bagoong Powder, a new innovative product created by roasting, oven drying, and grinding traditionally, bottled liquid fish bagoong turned into powdered form. Filipinos who are fond of adding bagoong in their dishes would find it more stable, handy, and appealing with its gourmet packaging. Moreover, it undergone organic food processing methods, ensuring that no artificial flavor or preservatives are added. This bagoong powder basically offers convenience by giving a different experience to the consumers since it is powdered with the same natural taste and flavor. Apart from this, did you know that the bagoong powder offers a lot of health benefits? Research suggests that fermentation causes fish protein to break down, making antioxidants available. Thus, the bagoong powder is claimed to help lower blood pressure, stimulate immune system, and control blood sugar. Results of nutritional analysis also revealed 
that one serving of bagoong, which is equivalent to one tablespoon, contains low amount of energy, protein, carbohydrate, fat, and all other vitamins and minerals. How can we ensure that the product is safe? Microbial analysis prove that bagoong powder is safe for consumption by showing a past or no detection microbial count, which is within the limits of the set of standards for microbiological quality of fermented fishes. Going to its market aspect, the bagoong powder will have a total project cost of 630,000 pesos, which covers the research and development, food analysis, and other related tests, and initial production. Likewise, it will have a projected sales of 1,171,493 and 96 pesos. Meanwhile, the Bagoong powder gives a return of investment of 20.86% and a payback period of 1.95 years. On the other hand, selling price of the Bagoong powder is at 17.78 pesos for a total manufacturing cost added with 20.60% markup to arrive with 21.44 pesos for selling price for retailers and then added with 12% bat to attain 24 pesos as the selling price for consumers being sold for 100 gram per pack. This will target common household from urban areas in Batanga City with income segmentation of 10,000 pesos and above monthly. Furthermore, the Bagoong powder will produce 173.32 bottles daily, 1,216.57 bottles weekly, 5,271.79 bottles monthly, and 63,261.53 bottles annually, as computed with its estimated demand. In conclusion, based on the consideration of socioeconomic, technical, and financial aspects, the project is achievable, beneficial, and profitable. This Bagong powder is a product of research and development with the initiative of Jeffrey P. Maranan and supported by Shirley E. Maranan, Philip Y. Del Rosario, Rona May Arcabico, Nina Alaysa S. Achanza, and Monica Grace O. Bautista. This would not be possible with the help of the following institutions. And feel free to contact us with the information flashed on the screen. This is Bagoong Powder, your gourmet quality condiment. Hey, sir. Thank you, po, Sir Leandro, for that, the powdered Bagoong. Okay. So moving on, we now have our third technology picture, um, the scallop with taro powdered soup. It's a healthy and convenient food technology that will meet your taste buds' desires. A tasty soup from the local shell meat abundant in the northern part of the Carles Islands of Iloilo. Our technology picture is um, Ma'am Rosalie Grace de la Cruz from Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College. Some concern when having a soup is they don't have enough time to cook for a meal. Second, skipping lunch or dinner. Third, feeding unexpected pup and guests. And lastly, healthy food is inaccessible to many families in need. Introducing our product, the scallop meat and taro, were pre treated dried, and powdered. Then, mixed with various nutritious formulation to meet your taste buds desire. Scallops with taro soup saves time as it allows you to prepare your soup instantly by adding hot water to the powders or by cooking them quickly in a saucepan. The soup can be filled with freshly cut vegetables and tastefully seasoned scallop meat that make it easy to prepare and can be eaten in a healthy feeling lunch or dinner. No need to rush out to the store if you have your pup and guest. The soup can provide a nutritious formulation for the family needs. The methods of producing our product for the scallops we steam, dried and powdered. For our taro, we boil, dried, and powderized. Then we mix these two products and add seasoning to taste. Our target consumers are the following. Our employees, students, drivers, 
housewives, LGU, or the government feeding programs. Here in shown below is our business model canvas of our product. So we have here our key partners, the value prepositions, customer relationships, customer segments, cost structures, key resources, channels, and the revenue streams. When you purchase our product, the scallops, taro soup, it has a net weight of 60 grams, which can be purchased for only 40 pesos with a shelf life of 30 days in a cooking temperature, six months when refrigerated. And for our packaging, it is packaged into a recyclable, flexible packaging. Because of the abundance of scallops in the northern part of Iloilo, it can promote nutritious scallops production in a natural way, giving it a significant advantage over competitors. The people behind the product is me, myself, Engineer Rosalie Grace de la Cruz, Irene Bargo, Julita Malunis, and Hermie Alegre. Scallops with dark soap, mapapawaw kayo sa sabaw. Wow, mapapawaw tayo sa sabaw. That's so nice. Thank you po, Ma'am uh, Rosalie Grace de la Cruz, her presentation on the scallop with taro powder soup. She's from Iloilo Polytechnic State College. Okay, so that's our first three technology features this, after, uh, this afternoon. The Okara Coco Nuggets, powdered bagoong, and the scallop with taro powdered soup. Uh, may we invite our teachers uh, to please uh, turn on their video. And we're all going also to invite uh, Prof. Matt and Metro Central Group, so we can proceed with the question and answer. Okay. Uh, so thank you, okay. thank you. Thank you for your presentations. So quick one, on the, on, on the scallop, I'm not familiar with the scallop with, with taro soup, okay? In, uh, in terms of recall, for instance, it could be the sinigang, okay? So in terms of the market that you have, who do you have in mind uh, for that? Um, Ma'am Rosalie, is Ma'am Rosalie, uh, wait lang po sir, I think she, she's not yet around. Okay, so it, uh, for, for, the, for, 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 the, for the one on, on, the, on the powdered bagoong, have you tested it? Have you tested it? I mean, you had customers try this one out. I mean, if you had, do you have tests when, okay, one is on a powdered form and then the other one is in the the, the nut powdered form, what was the preference like? Uh, we, we test that already uh, uh, when uh, the research is uh, ongoing. And uh, the preference of the consumer, particularly in Batanga City, is the powdered bagong rather than the liquid one. What was the reason that I mentioned? Uh, because the problem is the they say that uh, in terms of handling more on uh, the the preferences for safety safety preference. Are you asking the? I mean, if I were if the bago, I mean, if I'm uh, I'm used to this form of bago. Now you're sort of providing something which is in a different form. So I'm not sure if safety would be the first concern that I have or. Same taste. Same taste lang naman sir yung one, yung powdered bagoong to liquid one. But okay. the preference, particularly when uh, they want to go other places, particularly in, in other countries, uh, yung preference po ay more on sa handling nung... nung ah, okay. So are you looking at customers na they travel and carry this, this, this powdered bagoong? Yes sir, yes sir po. How many would it be? Uh, eight up, eight up to do sa pinag sa tenas po namin sa mga participants. Eight eight percent po yung pagsabi ng ganon. Tatravel sila ang magdadala ng bagong. 
Okay. And, and, and the first one, thank you, thank you, thank you for the for the answers. And and, and the first one for the for the for the okara, I learned something a new word okara. I thought it was okra, so now it's sort of okara. So so quick one in terms of competition. So you mentioned competition. Do you have someone specific in that era, in that in that arena where they have a vegan, where they have vegan uh, uh, nuggets? I know chicken McNuggets or what have you. Um, can you name a competition on, on, on that uh, on that space? Um, good afternoon, Paul, Professor good afternoon. Escobedo, and to the rest. So, uh, this product is uh, developed through the inspiration of uh, getting the to come up with a flagship product for our province, Davao Oriental. So, I believe, sir, that on the competition, the only uh, um, comp uh, competitor of this product is the chicken nuggets and all other nuggets made of meat. Uh, this is more advantageous because this has no meat at all. This is pure vegetable and all natural. In other places where sort of there's that, there's that, there's more the push towards so vegan products, for instance. Uh, have you heard of or have you, have you known of a vegan version of those of those uh, meat nuggets, successful ones? I haven't heard um, successful products made of vegetable or, or nuggets made of vegetable and other uh, raw materials. So I get inspired by this because supposedly okara or soy pulp is a waste or a byproduct already. So mm. giving economic value to okara or the soy pulp is a best opportunity or avenue to have additional income for mm -hmm. us processors. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, nandito na po si Ma'am Rosalie for your first question po kanina. Okay, for, for, for the scallop, I mean, for the scallop with taro uh, a soup. So I'm just not familiar with the, with, with the soup. Mas, mas sinigang yung, yung, yung alam ko. So in terms of, in terms of the, the target market for this one, who do you have in mind? Uh, Ma'am, wala pong audio. Ma'am Rosalie. Okay. Inaayos po ata ni Ma'am Rosalie po ang kanyang okay. audio. Okay. Any other question po, uh, Professor Matt? Sa so, ipapuiba po nating uh, features. Uh, uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Chris uh, Moreno from Mercato Centrale. Yeah, I have a question also uh, with the, uh, let's start with scallop meat and tara soup, right? Yeah, um, I believe on that one, I just need to check lang um, with uh, with the team of scallop meat. It's just to, how do we ensure like um, if their food, because uh, it, 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 uh, there's a scallop involved the bad in the product, right? And then um, uh, we need to check also the safety because if the target market is uh, there's a part of the target market na medyo allergic dun sa mga seafood, right? So yung mga target market na yun is uh, baka mawala na dun sa number of targets na maybe at the 10 persons na tina-target mo, eh, hindi natin ma-insure kung baka uh, safe ba to in terms of allergies kasi it's seafoods, di ba? And then it um, also I just need to uh, ask also yung process kasi um, since it's seafood, how do we ensure na uh, yung process is um, still uh, fresh when do you mix the taro soup, eh, di ba? I think taro is more on um, a cream based, eh, di ba? So how do we make sure na, na both products or both ingredients were combined and will last long. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, okay, Ma'am Rosalie, wala pa rin po kayong audio. <laughs> uh, ah, sige, baka may, uh, may okay. nagkaroon na problema sa audio. Okay, uh, don't worry, sa balikan na lang natin si Ma'am. Um, I want to ask question also to Powdered Bagoong, right? Um, 
for powder bagong, uh, me personally, I love bagong, right? So um, I just would like to ask lang kasi, um, what is the difference between the natural and the product that you have? So what it, what could be the uh, difference of the two, right? Uh, yeah, we all know it's powdered, right? So in terms of the taste and in terms of the uh, powdered, kasi it's you have to put some water pa to make it, Diba? Like a real bagoong. Uh, compared with the ready-made bagoong na yung uh, creaminess niya and yung freshness niya is better compared dun sa minimix na ng water. Can you enlighten me on that? Uh, sir, the, the taste is almost uh, the same. Uh, uh, yung sa powdered bagoong nga lang, sir, hindi naman sa nilalagyan ng... Pwede mo lagyan... But the option, there is an optional, pwede ka maglagay ng, ng tubig. But uh, yung preference ng iba, parang, parang yung acid, yung tinataktak lang ng one. Uh, uh, I see. Okay. So it's more like all, uh, like a condiments that you're going to put on top of the food, right? Para lang siyang uh, mga powder uh, mix na parang um, if there's a food that you want to put the bagoong, itataktak mo lang siya and then that's ready to eat. Ganun ba yung um, product, right? Yes. Tama, tama ba ako, right? Yes po. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yes po, yes sir. Yeah, uh, kasi I thought there is a, there you need to put something uh, para maging, ano siya, um, katulad din ng natural na bagoong, right? That's sir, yung condiments talaga po siya pa. Yeah, kasi ang, ay yung advantage kasi natural na bagoong is that it will last for long, di ba? Right? Yung, um, uh, you can store it in somewhere or like in the fridge. But this one is more on the handy thing. Tama ba ako? Actually, sir, yung, although namin na test for shelf life, yung powdered bago, but uh, yung first uh, production niya, yung ginagawa pa yung mga yung powdered bago ng mga researchers, 2015, and until now, hindi pa siya nagkakaroon ng molds. Kaya nga lang, hindi pa, hindi siya, hindi pa siya nabubuksan. Mm-hmm. I see. All right. For this uh, product, um, may know um, who is your target market again? Uh, actually, sir, yung ginagawa namin yung mga yung uh, product namin, ay, the, the primary target is the uh, OFWs and those who are those who are traveled abroad or those who are uh, traveled in other places because of the portability of that product. But uh, in terms of market value, the target is the household of uh, Batangas City for the meantime. Or okay. Batangas Prab. All right. Um, I think uh, uh, your strategy on providing it or helping it to the um, outside the country is a good idea because like all Filipinos, when they are uh, mga OFW, uh, they're missing our type of food, diba? So this one is another alternative. But um, may I know why only in Batangas in target market niyo? Uh, actually, sir, nasa initial stage pa siya. Kaya hindi namin... Mm. Na- okay. Na- yeah. Kasi, uh, so you, you are based in Batangas, right? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. I'm based in Mendoza. So it's most likely we are in the same um, aspect, right? But uh, I would suggest lang, no, um, sir, in terms of this one... I believe it's a good uh, product din naman. And then, uh, don't stick lang. Don't stick with uh, Batangas, right? So, uh, actually, there's a lot of uh, areas in the Metro Manila. Like, uh, there's you can join this um, um, mga events. Like, that they, they put like their variety, no? So, uh, just offer your product and don't put, or, you know, even it's initial stage, you can... Um, there's a lot of ways for you to offer product and to uh, make it the wider um, aspect for you to uh, uh, offer your products um, in the whole Philippines or in, even in international. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Sige. Um, sure. Um, um, last lang dun sa, uh, I have a question with the Okara, right? Hello? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. This is uh, something interesting to me um, about the Okora Coconut Nuggets. Right? Um, actually, um, 
uh, you mentioned a while ago with uh, with this, uh, that you're going to compete with the chicken nuggets and everything and this stuff, right? Um, is that uh, right? Amabako? Okay. So, uh, uh, with this one, um, how do you want? How do you present? Or how, how's the packaging of this type of? Food? Actually, sir, um, I will not focus on being a competitor of the chicken nuggets, but instead, a complementary of those nuggets available in the market. So I want to be uh, known as a plant-based nuggets. So it's not uh, produced from meat. So therefore, I will focus on that uh, particular niche we're in plant-based or, or vegan or vegetarian or for those people who wanted to eat nuggets but um, restricted with other kind of meats. So this is the good choice. So um, the thing is the, the product will be packed um, securely with um, yun po bang, um, plastic bag. I mean, um, this is sealed properly. Okay. All right, and, yes, and then it's uh, pre-cooked, right? And you're going to fry it back, you know? uh, Ready to cook product, sir. Okay, all right. So um, this one for you to just like advice now for the product that you have. Uh, make the best uh, target market you have. This one is for the families, right? And then also with uh, uh, with the foreigners that we have right now, and also you can do partnership with uh, gyms whatsoever, those who are um, health conscious. But this is, I believe, uh, very effective in terms of the families that uh, instead of uh, give the parents giving them uh, natural chicken nuggets, they can play around and make it daya, diba? Not to make sure na, ah, this is uh, something healthy on their, se- um, on their side. But... I would suggest that for your packaging, since you are promoting that this is a healthy one, um, maybe you can um, advise the or the consumer that you use um, a healthy oils, right? Because mawawala yung um, yung focus nyo and then um, your mission for the uh, for the brand product na healthy lifestyle. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for that suggestion. We'll take in Okay. I think that's all with me. Um, we can proceed to the... Uh... Okay. So, um... something lang. Just, 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 okay. just quick input in terms of yung sa, sa vegan nuggets here. So now, that has been around for quite a time. And now, I mean, next week, uh, next week we have Monday Nissen going on IPO and they've bought corn and alternative meat. So I'm just quite curious because when I ask you in terms of who has been successful using uh, uh, plant-based substitutes for meat, uh, in terms of coming up with an answer, we haven't had one. So it might be, don't get fixated on having a plant version of a, of a, of a, of a nugget, okay? It might be, there would be other areas at which that uh, soya pulp, okay? That soya pulp or, 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 or nyog, okay? Can be of use to, to, to something else. Because I think, I mean, mukha na tabuna na from plant-based, now we have corn is based on in, in fungi, okay? So there's something, uh, ibang, ibang, ibang area. the niche that you mentioned may not be the niche that's going to be baka mas malit pa talaga. So try to see if there are other areas you can, you can uh, bring this one to bear. Yeah. Yes, sir. Great idea from you, sir. Thank you so much. Well taken. Okay. So thank you, po. Um, we have now um, Ma'am Rosalie. So if um, she can address the questions po about scallops. Wala talaga. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Wala po talagang audio. Ma'am, uh, can you uh, can you just put, put uh, your uh, reply po sa question ni Sir Chris and Professor Matt sa chat box so they can they can see. Palagay na lang po sa everyone. Unfortunately po, meron po tayong um, technicalities with the microphone of Ma'am Rosalie. So sorry about that. Okay, so ma'am, palagay na lang po sa chat box. Okay, um, just one last question. Uh, meron po tayo from the FB Live. I think this is uh, very important para po sa bagoong powder. Pareho po sila from ma'am Teresita Sanchez and Lirios Katiwalan. Uh, Sir Leandro, they were asking about, na-mention yun po kasi na ang bagoong lowers the blood uh, pressure. So po, meron po bang scientific research that proves that bagoong can lower your blood pressure? Because we know for a fact that too much salt 
um, can boost your blood pressure or increase your blood pressure. Sir Leandro? In Sir terms Ma of, okay. uh, pwede pong ang, kasi nandito po yung researcher, uh, the, the researcher can, can answer the okay. uh, question, no? Uh, kasi yes, siya yung, I think, the uh, uh, expert here. Sige po, Sir. Uh, hello po. Good afternoon po, ma'am, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, considering po yung ano, yung atin pong claim na lowers, uh, not necessarily lowers blood cholesterol, but dun po sa reference po natin na liquid form, uh, mas mababa lang po siya. But it doesn't mean it lowers blood cholesterol. Kasi may salt pa rin po siya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yung comparison po with the liquid form, Okay po? So, yun po yung, yun po. So, wala pong claim talaga na naglo-lower siya ng blood pressure. Okay. Wala po. Wala po mga Okay. Sige po. Maganda pong na-clarify natin yun. Salamat po, sir. Okay. So, I think that's round up our question and answer for our first three batch. Again, thank you po, Prop Escobedo and Sir Chris. Um, that's again the, our technology, the Okara Coco, uh, Coco Nuggets uh, from Dabao Oriental State College of Science and Technology. The powdered bagoong uh, from Batangas State University uh, and the scallop with taro powdered soup from Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College. So maraming salamat po Ma'am Cheryl, Sir Leandro, and Ma'am Rosalie. Okay, let's move on. Nagugutom na po ba kayo kasi meron pa uli po tayo mga food products? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have here the rambutan chocolate powder. The chocolate comes from rambutan kernels which can be used in various uh, chocolate-based drinks and pastries. This is a product of Camarines Norte State College, and our technology picture is Sir Leo Agustin P. Bella. Good day, everyone. As we eat our favorite fruits, we chew its seeds away. But how about if this waste could be turned into something loved by most people, wherein it could satisfy your day through its irresistible sweet temptation. Now, let me ask you, would you still throw it away? Well, you better think twice, because maybe you haven't heard yet our technology. My name is Engineer Leo Agustin P. Vela, all the way from Camarinas Norte State College. Food wastes always constitute the largest portion in waste generation of a person. Reports say that almost half of municipal solid waste in the Philippines includes food scraps, kitchen waste, and garden waste. This is mere the fact that fruits and vegetables are one of the most basic commodities in a person's daily life. In the world of agriculture, tropical fruits occupy a special role as they take place more than 90% of its production in developing countries like the Philippines. One example is the rambutan, which is a seasonal fruit with interesting taste and color. During its season, a matured rambutan tree could produce as much as 200 kilograms. However, when it comes to waste, the typical losses and waste for a rambutan is estimated to be 50 to 65 percent for its skin and seeds. They also accumulate an average percentage of 15 percent of its mass. So, what can we do with this waste? Our solution is the Rambutan Choco Powder. Rambutan Choco Powder is a product generated from the seeds of rambutan which undergone a series of food processes and methods. It is a very good ingredient in baked products like drop cookies, crinkles, cakes, and even chocolate drinks. With its high acidic acid content, it prolongs the storage life of baked products. With the wide usage of cocoa mass or butter in the food sector, this technology could be a potential and viable ingredient supplement for cocoa chocolate. As we manage the business, the income revenue streams will be coming from product and distribution sales, as well as the licensing charges of the technology takers. 
we are going to collect 5% licensing fee to our partner distributors who sells our product to cooperatives and other business entities. Also, our technology comes with a business package that includes training and mentorship. As our product will enter the market, the closest competitors are the chocolate powder business sectors utilizing cacao and other fruits such as avocado, dragon fruit, and banana. A projected income of 1.1 million pesos could be accumulated as we start the business domestically in the Philippines. Then, an estimated income of 13.2 million pesos considering other ASEAN countries. Our team is composed of Dr. Lilibet A. Rojas, the technology inventor, yours truly, Engineer Leo Agustin P. Vela, an electrical engineer, and Ms. Maria Eileen S. De La Rosa, a business and financial analyst. We need national and international distribution partners, particularly in Southeast Asia, like Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia. So why invest in us? We, in Camarines Norte State College, are the only public HEI in the agricultural province of Camarines Norte. We are also committed in research and development for the improvement of our society, and we address the needs of our stakeholders with quality and satisfaction. Thank you for listening and giving us this opportunity to share our technology and be a part of the simple initiatives for utilizing food waste through our research undertaking. We have a committed team, we have a proven technology, and we keep the sweet pleasure and health in balance. Thank you. Uh, Sir Agustin P. Bella, that is our rambutan chocolate powder. Okay, our next technology feature is uh, the organic mascobado sugar, a type of sugar which with uh, low glucose content made from organic sugar cane and hydrated lime with a shelf life of 6 to 12 months. Uh, this technology is from the Central Philippine State University and our technology feature is Ma'am Mary uh, Marie Dame Earl uh, Waldato. The pride of Central Philippine State University, the Muscovado sugar, your healthier sugar substitute. Refined sugar has a lot of unknown chemical ingredients that could affect human health. But CPSU's Muscovado is made with selected varieties of sugar cane and grown organically. It is sold for a cheap price of 100 pesos per 500 grams packed with an environment-friendly, resealable, crafted paper bags. Target markets for the product, including those who are health-conscious, has a projected demand of 158,900 packs or estimated to be 80 tons of Muscovado per month. Since November 2019 to March 2021, 2,180 kilograms of Muscovado were produced and sold and the university aims to be the number one supplier of Muscovado in the whole island of Negros. The brain and muscle of Muscovado is no other than our president, Dr. Aladino C. Moraca, and Ms. Luisa M. Moreno, the project in charge and a faculty of the College of Agriculture and Forestry. Muscovado was originally funded by the Commission on higher education, improving the facilities in the production and packaging area. CHED aims to develop a facility wherein agriculture, sugar technology, and engineering students can perform their academic laboratories and trainings. Sugar canes are bought from small-scale planters from the neighboring communities and from the products of the university's allocated land area for the plantation. As the area is improved, a utility model was filed and granted. Continuous production took place. Employees were trained and hired to produce quality Muscovado. 
through the capacity of the design of the equipment, a maximum of 200 kilograms of muscovado can be produced per operation, which gains 11,682 pesos as a net income for the university. So in order to increase the muscovado production, larger equipment, and more sugarcane supply, which would result to a greater production and income. Promoting the pride of the university, our product is displayed in different markets in collaboration with different organizations and LGU. By CPSU Muscovado, made different, tastes different. Okay, marami pong salamat, Ma Marie, for that. That's our organic Muscovado sugar. Okay, our next product is the Antiques Fried Chewy Bar. It's a delicious delicacy using three equally natural ingredients of mungo, rice, and muscovado, which may offer a solution to the malnutrition problem in the province. Uh, this product is developed by the University of Antique, and our technology pitcher is Ma'am Sherry Bill Mejares. In a survey conducted by Rappler, malnutrition is prevalent among Filipino children 0 to 10 years old. In 2017, in fact, Antique has the highest prevalence of malnutrition in Region 6 and still is among the priority areas in Western Visayas. Aside from poverty as the cause of malnutrition, most children are also picky eaters. This problem could either cause malnutrition, undernourishment, or even obesity because they would rather eat unhealthy food that have high sugar content and artificial flavoring. All the more in this time of pandemic, the availability of healthy food sources could be quite a challenge. According to the Nutritional Council of the Philippines, this is the report on the nutritional value or status of malnutrition in Region 6. For underweights in school children ages 5 to 10 years old, there is a 38.9 prevalence with approximately 300,000 children. For teens ages 10.8 to 19 years old, underweight is estimated to be at 36.5%. We are from the University of Antique. My name is Marilyn Biodarga, and I'm here to present to you Antique's Pride Chewy Bar, Antique's Healthy Snack in a Bar. We will be initially targeting the malnourished and the undernourished children, as well as obese young adults in the different regions in Western Visayas. Eventually, we will be targeting health conscious individuals looking for a healthy snack alternative. Finally, we will also be distributing this product as a Pasalubong delicacy in various retail outlets and Pasalubong centers. For our solution to the problem, Antique's Fried Chewy Bar is both healthy and appealing with locally abundant nutritious primary ingredient, which eventually will help out local farmers. These primary ingredients are mongo, brown rice, and muscovado. It is a super healthy combination used to create a palatable product for target market. It's low in calorie, it's fiber-rich, and gluten-free. It's a good source of potassium and magnesium and a natural, natural high-energy food source. It also provides digestive health. The university is currently producing other food variety of the rice or mongo rice sesame mix introduced by FNRI, still in the form of a powdered mix and cookie, with which UA is an, into an eight-week 60 million contract with the Department of Education, as well as with some IGUs, LGUs as income-generating project. UA plans to continuously market the goods to the Fed and local government units. The following is a table on the opportunities of the Chewy Bar for the, for the malnourished and undernourished children, captured through the Department of Education and the LGU, sales of 900,000 pesos was estimated with only 30% of the market being served. Assuming that 20% of the obese young adults are targeted, it will earn an estimated sales of 760,000 pesos. 200,000 pesos is the estimated sales expected to be gained from Pasalubong centers and with a total of 1.86 million pesos. Based on the income earned from a five-month contract with a debt end of 60 million pesos, it is estimated to earn 16.8 in the third year with a 5% annual increase and in year five, it is estimated to have a sale of 19,448,100 pesos. Antiques Chewy Bar has applied for intellectual, intellectual property protection last 2020 and has recently received its notice of publication for a utility model. Its technology creator is bound for another FNRI training on Nutriban this month, uh, 2021. After the, 
after the project with the Department of Education, we are planning to distribute the products to retail outlets and possible centers. And so to actively push the product into the market, we will continue to make active negotiations with the LGUs, the DEF Ed, and other government agencies that has mandates on malnutrition problems. We will also use our Antica Pride website, the social media, signages, participation in trade fairs, and distribution to possible centers as our strategies. The mover on this technology is Dr. Mary Ann J. Raimaro. She is the project manager of Woodlands, an income generating project of UA. She was trained under FNRI, paving the way for making UA as FNRI accredited institution. Chewy Bar is akin to common butter scotch. JD Biscotch House and Bread and Butter sell similar food delicacies but are using wheat flour instead of the rice and mango flour. Unlike our chewy bar, which uses the healthier Moscovado, refined sugar is the usual sweetener in these commercialized snacks. UA is producing food blends as an income generating project. So if you want to become partners, you can license our antique Sprite chewy bar with 20% of annual net income. Or you can be a partner as distributor of our antique Sprite chewy bar. And finally, you can be our target customers who can enjoy our product. So we are looking forward to making business with you. Good day. Hey, marami pong salamat and my apologies. Uh, the technology picture was Ma'am Maribig Adarga from uh, University of Antique. Okay, so that's our three uh, food products, the Rambutan Choco Powder, the Organic Mascobado Sugar, and Antique Sprite Chewy Bar. Uh, we now proceed to the question and answer session. So again, we are requesting the three pre uh, presenters and our evaluators, Prof. Matt and Sir Chris. Uh, okay, any question po, Sir? Hi, uh, good afternoon. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, another good three sets of batches. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so um, I have a question with, uh, with Rambutan Choco Powder. Yes, sir. Good afternoon po. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine po. <laughs> yeah, hi, thanks. Yeah, so question, Lana, because it's, uh, I believe, one of the main uh, ingredients of your uh, product is rambutan, right? And yes, I sir. only have, uh, like, a small question about that one because uh, we know that rambutan is a, uh, one of the uh, food that is uh, seasonal, right? Yes, How do we yes. ensure that... Um, uh like the availability of the fresh rambutan to create your product if it's not on the right season right okay sir so uh so once again doctor note so to answer your question sir uh based from the research uh, the study conducted by the main inv uh, main proponent of this study the supply for rambutan or the utilization for the chocolate powder can be used as a pure and as a, uh, what do you call this, yung pandagdag po parang additive and panghalo sa the typical cocoa powder so that the utilization would not be that much as compared sa full po siyang substitute. So comes to the season, so kung ano po yung season niya, so, of course, there will be a expected of high number of production and a portion will be stored to be able to cater the demand comes to the off-season of the said fruit. Yeah, correct. Because uh, that's the, my only concern on this one because um, um, storing this type of uh, fruit, of course, it's, it really won't last, right? Because um, it's the type of uh, fruit that we have na talaga seasonal. So um, for the product that you have, it's so parang it seems like the medyo light lang yung contribution ni rambutan for the product, right? So it's more on the choco powder pa rin. But uh, yeah, on the rambutan choco powder, sir, uh, the main ano po is rambutan kernels po talaga or the rambutan seeds. Oh, okay. Then, it could be ano lang po. So for example, if sa gagamitan po ng baked products, so pwede pong ano siya, yung a portion will be the cocoa and a portion will be rambutan or it could also be pure rambutan po. Okay. Yeah, because uh, my only, uh, okay, of course, uh, I would like your product to fly um, to somewhere, right? So um, just make a study lang uh, in terms of the uh, my concern about the yung hindi siya season talaga 
for the rambutan because that's that will be your main product. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question with organic muscovado sugar. Yes, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Um, so uh, I have a small question lang um, about the product that you have because it seems like uh, but, um, actually the Muscovade is one of my mother's favorites. She's using this one. No? Uh, the only difference is uh, I would like to ask are you main difference nyo across the other Muscovado products na available sa market? Um, as far as I know, so it's the processor and the the ingredients that is um, applied also in our UM for the for for the processing of its of the muscovado sugar. So you're saying the uh, the process that they are doing is a yes. different process that you guys are doing, but at the same time it will result na same muscovado sugar, um, tama ba? Yes, sir. But um, but those sugar canes that were that were used. Where I know um, we have different varieties there, and we have the specific variety only that we use for our muscovado. And at the same time, um, they're what do, they're, they're, what do you call this? Um, yung pataba po na ginagamit is um, organic, but we just we used some vermicompost and other other organic fertilizers also. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. Um... Ah, okay, because I'm um, just thinking lang on how you become, uh, how you guys leverage with across with the other muscovado sugar na available sa market, right? So um, I think um, in the long run, you just have to make sure you have to explain to the market or to your target uh, market uh, this very important factors why you guys are different with the other muscovado sugar na available sa market. Okay, pa. All right. Thank you. Okay, that's all. That's all for me. Okay, thank you, Professor Chris. Prop Matt. Quick one. Uh, CPSU. So you have. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, uh, I, I'll put you both of you a spot. So Antica's Pride Chewy Bar is having muscovado as ingredient of the product, isn't it? So we have uh, Antica Chewy Bar. Yes, sir. So, Good afternoon, sir. Antica Chewy Bar. What's stopping you from buying CPSU's? Is it the first time you've heard of organic muscovado sugar of, of, of CPSU? Uh, actually, yes, sir. But in fact, in Antique, we have uh, muscovado also, sir. And I think we are one of the highest in terms of production in the Philippines. So in terms of consideration of CPSU, not much. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So, so, so <laughs> Sorry, CPSU, ma we have something in there that's for places that have uh, muscovado already. Meron ka value add? Uh, value added for the chewy bar, sir. No, for, for CPSU. So, oh, sorry, sorry. For, for instances, places like uh, Antique, where they have also sort of supply of, of Muscovado, are those areas that you can target as well, or you are confined to, 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 to where CPSU is, is? And by the way, the channels that you have only at the school, do you do online, for instance, during this pandemic? Um, we do, we do this. We have a display center here at uh, at front of our gate. We're in it is a highway. We're in motorists also um, pass and also to to visit to visit our display center. And also um, we do promote our product by um, giving it away as a gift to other to our visitors <laughs> from from other provinces in okay. I know. Yes, sir. The, the sad thing about this one is that they're going to come back, but expect it as a gift as well. Yes, <laughs> okay. okay, let me sort of again connect now. Antique Sprite Chew Bar and then the Rambutan Chuko Powder. Now, both of you, you have a product, but I'm not certain whether it was shared. Meron na ba kayong early adapters? Unlike sa, sa Muscovado, so kayo nagbibenta na kayo, you're gaining revenue na, di ba? But say for, for uh, Antique Sprite Chew Bar, so nagbibenta na ba kayo? Yung people are actually using i mean the kids are actually buying it and eating it actually sir in generic product we have already a market in uh, the in the person of dep ed and the lgus so but yung, benta, ng mga bata. yung generic product niya po pero yung chewy bar po is still in the prototyping stage okay. and we are still in the process of uh, packaging the product sir and so 
try to sort of bring it as early to the to the well, definitely yes, taking care of there no? because your value proposition is something that kids would would want to have okay aside from being nutritious but if kids don't like it okay yeah uh, that might sort of put a big dent same thing for the organic uh, muscov uh, no, no, for the rambutan choco powder meron na ba kayong early adapter i mean when you're looking um, at businesses to to try it in their bake shop so the current usage of my meron tayo mga cacao coming from uh, producing chocolate diba? and now you're trying to do the same thing but instead of cacao you're using rambutan seeds for that one rambutan kernels but are, are bake shops using it can you showcase someone that sort of okay we've used this one and here you can try it out okay sir uh, good afternoon po. thank you for the uh, to answer your question sir as of this po uh, the technology is not yet being uh, adopted and commercialized po. and with regards to the possible business adapters so in here naman po si in the province of Camarines Norte there are emerging uh, small businesses pertaining to cake shops and bake shops on which we are dealing to target so the remaining months of the before the project ends okay That's so try, try try Thank to, you. try to bring them very early because if they are your target uh, customer in terms of taste in terms of how it's going to mix with the other ingredients when they make the, the cake the earlier that we get to know about those things the earlier those feedback can sort of help you adjust in terms of what's needed such that it can cater to their needs okay so don't make okay. it a perfect pub but try to sort of okay how can they try it in terms of test the taste uh, second is paano ba mag -mix? at least know na yung know na yung mga sort of uh, the, the functions the the, the reactions of a, of a of a chocolate okay they know i mean if the the the, the, the bakers they know what's going to happen but yours is a different uh, I, I suppose rambutan is in the family of in the family of, of cacao, but how it is going to sort of really fill the space of that uh, chocolate uh, using uh, using rambutan now? It's still a question mark because it it hasn't been uh, tried, isn't it? Um, sir, can I add something? Go ahead. Um, based from the research conducted, uh, the evaluation used was the sensory evaluation for the respondents on which the treatments uh for the three treatments we the first one is for the cacao pure cacao uh -huh. chocolate powder the second is the mix between cacao and rambutan and the third is the pure rambutan chocolate powder alone and okay. based from the results for uh the the one that got the highest general acceptability is the mix between cacao and rambutan both the Pure cacao alone and pure rambutan alone obtained the, the same level of general mm -hmm. acceptability. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So this is a testing that you've done with the ano yun, uh, mga bakers na yun, or? Uh, for a uh, small community, po, the first uh, set of testing evaluation for the product. Po. But we're going to expand and to explore other uh, communities as well as, as my, and most especially the commercial ones but mm -hmm. because i mean they might have a different they might they might sort of spot taste we ordinary sort of eaters cannot okay so in any case yes, good thing that you've done it already okay thank you very much sir yeah. thank you pa. okay is that it yeah. sir okay we'll we'll try to entertain some questions from the fb po so from uh, rivera badon ali ponga uh, rambutan ke Sir Leo. Rambutan seeds have a bitter taste due to the traces of alkaloid, tannin, saponin, and uh, phenolic compounds such as uh, uh, elagic acid, corilagin, and geranin. Uh, are your product being analyzed to these alkaloids? Um, could I could you please uh, repeat the question po, so that I could look at on the scope of the contents of our study? Po? Um, he was asking po if uh, yung product po natin, yung choco powder, rambutan choco powder, had been analyzed for alkaloids dahil po ang alkaloids po ay may bitter taste uh, due to traces of um, uh, due to the traces of alkaloids yung ating mga rambutan seeds. Have you done any uh, product um, analysis? Okay po. So upon seeing and reviewing the methodology of the conducted research, I think it was not mentioned or it was not covered within the scope of the study but we're going to look into it 
as we go for the further improvement of the present technology. Okay. Because yes, I do yes, believe so. that a, that a different method for was used comes to the microbiology and the processing standards, what and alike for the with regards to food process. Mm -hmm. Not the alkaloids, sir. Okay, noted po yon. So plants pa lang po yon. Okay, for a uh, University of Antique, Mamaribik. If ever that we are interested sa product ninyo, kanino po kami makikipag-coordinate? Next po, is there a plan or possibility na magbisita kayo sa every town dito sa Antique para sa market presentation ninyo? That's from LGU Sebaste po. Okay, thank you for the interest po. Uh, so to contact us, you can either contact uh, Dr. Marie Adaymaro. She's here right, actually uh, participating right now, the creator. And yours truly, Maribig Adarga, through our landline, sir, uh, 543-8161 or our website, um, Antiques Pride. Na. And uh, yes, we can do that uh, given time. And uh, kung wala na pong COVID, <laughs> pwede na po kami uh, mag uh, town to town. Thank you po. Okay, marami pong salamat sa interest ng ang LGU Sebaste po. Okay, so I think that's it. Wala na po tayong question na pumasok from FB Live. So maraming marami pong salamat sa ating three presenters, si Ma'am Maribik, uh, si Ma'am um, Marie, uh, or tsaka si Sir Leo. Uh, and thank you for our evaluator, si Prof. Matt, at tsaka si Sir uh, Christopher. Okay, marami pong salamat. That's our second batch. Okay, um, just an announcement lang po kay Sir uh, Juan Cruz. Uh, thank you po, uh, thank you for your email and we will connect you po sa team uh, team of uh, Bagoong Powdered. Maraming pong salamat. And again po dun sa mga questions, uh, you can, uh, hindi po namin ma-entertain po yung iba. Uh, so, but we encourage you po to email uh, ttpd at picard.dost.gov.ph. Okay, so more food products. Uh, we move on to our third batch. So, Ang next po natin ay ang veggie cookies, another healthy uh, snack cookies supplemented with a highly nutritious vegetable, uh, the lupo-lupo or the uh, uh, alternantera sicilis. Uh, this is a product of Aklan State University and our technology pitcher is uh, Ma'am Maria Rosary uh, Tesorero. Are you looking for a healthy but young snacks not only for your kids but also for you? Or are you a diet conscious but craving for food that is so delicious and very healthy? But how? The problem is most of the snacks in the market are hypercolored, too much sugar content, with artificial sweeteners loaded and other additives and preservatives. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Maria Fe Palacio Popes of Auckland State University and I'm here to introduce to you the VG Cookies. These VG Cookies contain powdered lupu, -lupu leaves. Lupu, lupu has a scientific name of Alternantera sessilis which contains one of the highest chlorophyll and fiber to clean your digestive system and also help stop colon cancer. According to John Hopkins, lupu lupu is an alternative way. Even in the site of medicinal plants, lupu lupu or bunga bunga was also posted. Last April 27, 2021, the ASU conducted the first technology pitching caravan and they distributed brochures, leaflets, and infographics in the western side of Aklan. And it shows that at least 45% of parents are looking for a healthy snack for their kids, 20% of youths are trying to engage in a healthy diet, 25% of adults are health conscious, and at least 10% of the local tourists are looking for pasalubong. Since the product was innovated in response to the rising demand for healthy foods, the owner can earn profit if it will be available in the market. The VG cookie is best made for commercialization for healthy consumption of the customers and this made the product different from other types of cookies available in the market. The prospective investor may consider market opportunities as the cookie can be sold to bakery outlets, 
food retail stores and pasalubong centers in Aklan and Boracay Island. Cost of production is at least 200,000 and estimated sales a day for 100 packs at 40 pesos per pack. Estimated profit is 40% annually. The use of funds will be for additional capital, increase in production, and extend more outlets. The current market offered a great opportunity in the baking industry, especially that the location is a tourist destination. The key tactics in marketing under marketing strategies includes management, teamwork, product promotion to Facebook page, blogs, Instagram accounts, and provincial trade fairs. For packaging, it will be packed in crystal clear rectangular plastic, sealed and properly labeled with logo, nutrition facts, expiry dates, and the name of the manufacturer. The supply and demand situation has a high demand in terms of food snacks and pasalubong. Frequent buyers are health conscious, thus the enrichment of the product supplemented with lupu-lupu powdered leaves were formulated. The technology had a notable milestone. It was already presented in different symposium. You don't need to worry because it has a utility model certificate and it was already published. Once you buy this technology, it will not be stolen from you. Actually, it was already being sold in the bakery of the inventor in their own town. This technology was invented by Dr. Perlita Israel, a PhD HE in UP Diliman, Quezon City, and a professor in Auckland State University, College of Hospitality and Rural Resource Management in Ibahay Campus. Mr. Aviv is the general manager and Mr. Jaira as distributor. So, what are you waiting for? Remember, investment today is a source of income tomorrow. Okay, so what are you waiting for? <laughs> Yan ang challenge ni Ma'am sa atin. Marami pong salamat. Uh, my apologies, that is uh, Ma'am Maria Fe Popes from Aklan State University uh, talking about the veggie cookies. Okay, our next technology is rice mungo sesame pulburon. It's a healthier version of our all-time favorite dessert, the pulburon. Davao del Norte State College offers the rice mungo sesame pulburon with improved nutritional value. Our presenter is Sir Ronald Mansekiao. Okay, Sir. Hello and welcome to everyone. Today, allow me to present to you a great business opportunity for not only for you, but also for the consumer. This is titled the Rice Mongo Sesame or RMS Polvoron. As you already know, Polvoron is a traditional snack. It is actually of Spanish origin coming from the word polvo or powder, and essentially, it is actually a powdered milk candy. Polvoron is actually very easy to prepare. It has very minimal ingredients of usually just flour, sugar, and butter, and no special equipment is required when you are making polvoron. However, despite the ease of use in making polvoron, it is high in calorie, low in fiber, and low in nutrition. This does not address the, the main problem of many children in the Philippines of malnutrition. According to the Expanded National Nutrition Survey in 2008, 2 out of 10 2 to 5 year olds is actually underweight. In the same survey, among 2 to 5 year olds, 3 out of 10 children their growth is stunted. Still in the same survey, among 2 to 5 year olds, 1 out of 20 children, their growth is wasted. To combat these grim statistics, three ingredients will help us combat malnutrition in the Philippines. This is rice, mongo, and sesame. 
The DOST FNRI, or the Food Nutrition Research Institute, has developed complementary foods based on rice, mungo, and sesame. Rice is low in prolamin, good for gluten sensitives, hypoallergenic, colorless, and bland. Mungo is high in protein, high in fiber, low lipid, high antioxidants, and bioactive phytochemicals, and sesame has minerals calcium, magnesium, potassium, iron, niacin, and thiamine, antioxidants, and is also a nutraceutical that reduces blood pressure and lipid profile. With these three ingredients, the Davao del Norte State College has developed a new product to help combat malnutrition. This product is the Rice Mungo Sesame Pulveron or RMS Pulveron. Our developed product has a slight odor, slightly coarse texture, sweet taste, slightly acidic with a low moisture content, and um, average total soluble solids. This, these characteristics, according to our research, have been considered to be likable by our taste testers. More importantly, our production cost is only 101.77 pesos with a return on investment which is 45.70%. Our product is especially targeted to students in the public sector, specifically in the primary education sector. In, in the Department of Education, they only allow foods in their canteens that are nutritionally important and thus RMS Pulveron is an important product to be sold in those areas. And with that, thank you so much and we hope that you can contact us at iptbm at dnse.edu.ph for the licensing of our product. Thank you so much. Okay, hey, maraming maraming pong salamat, Sir Mark. Uh, that is the Rice Mungo Sesame Pulburon from Davao del Norte State College. Okay, our third product is, a, is the Battled Bing, uh, Vegan Langunisa Gourmet. It's a specialty pork sausage made from the popular vegan langunisa of Ilocos, conveniently packed in a bottle which uh, with tasty oil and spices. Okay, uh, it, uh, our technology um, feature is Sir Roberto Regala from University of Northern Philippines. The University of Northern Philippines in the World Heritage City of Vigan Ilocosur, through its intellectual property and technology business management, presents Nanang Longganisa, a ready-to-eat bottled garment sausage, applies food technology in the making of garment sausage, bottled in a healthy solution of canola oil and spices. Nanam is Ilocano word which in English means flavor. When prefixed to form the word nananam, which translates to the adjective flavorful or sumptuous. The brand Nanam aims to convey the idea of a finger-licking treat in every bottle of the product. Longanisa is a pork sausage fermented with spices. It has many variants. These variants are known after the name of the town or province where it comes from. The garlicky sausage made in the Lacoster is popularly known as Vegan Longanisa. Vegan Longanisa is a pork sausage that are garlicky, spicy, tangy, and salty with the distinct pungent aroma stir fried on its own rendered fat. Vegan longanisa is said to be an influence of the Mexican salami. However, the vegan longanisa is a small and plump native sausage, good for about two or three bites. The tradition of making this native delight has existed since the period of the Spanish galleon trade. It is recognized as the Vegan City's One Town One Project selection. Vegan longanisa are usually sold as pack and un. Longanisa that are sold in the local market are not yet cooked nor ready to eat. It is a staple food for the Ilocanos, like bacon is to the Americans. Since bacon became a tourist spot in the late 1990s, 
It is usually served by hotels and inns as part of breakfast offered to tourists. Garnished with slices of tomato, pickled papaya, or other vegetables along with egg and fried rice. As a value added to increase the quality and selling point, this project turns vegan longanisa into garment sausage. As a garment, it is distinct from other Philippine sausages since it uses only the local suka basi and spice with native Iloco garlic. Adding to its unique flavor, this garment sausage is presented with spicy oil, laced with native Iloco garlic, and hot chili known locally as Sili Sairo. As a response to busy people who usually demands on the go foods, several pieces of the garment vegan longanisa is packed in bottle. Hence, the final commodity product could be eaten anytime and anywhere without the hassle of cooking. This is also one way of improving the packaging of the commodity product. Bottling, labeling, and registering the product according to the local and national regulations safeguard the integrity of the vegan longanisa, separating it from fake vegan native sausages that are sold to unsuspecting clients. The German longanisa is made up of pork and do not make use of any extender. It presents to the market a cooked gourmet food that made use of a local Iloco spices. It is a pre-cooked and ready-to-eat commodity product that comes in bottles. Differentiating it from other longanisa, it is not sold as packed by a dozen or kilo. Instead, it is sold by the bottle that could serve one or two persons. On financial projections, the total cost per bottle is estimated at 130 Philippine Peso. On sales, net profit and broad projections over a five-year period. As estimated by the national government, herd immunity will be attained when 70% of the population have been vaccinated. This is roughly about 17 million Filipinos. As a conservative projection, the vaccination to herd immunity is estimated to extend until the end of 2023. It is also assumed that restrictions on tourism will be negligible by that time. The tourism data from 2015 to 2018 shows that the average visits to vegan per year is about 1.4 million. Sales to tourist target is set to a conservative 2% of all tourists visiting vegan, which projects the sales in bottles at 28,000 on the first year, 2022. Also, a conservative approach, the sales on the second year is also pegged at 28,000 with no increase from the previous year, presuming that herd immunity has not yet been attained. However, on the third through the fifth year, assuming that full vaccination rollout has finished, the sales uptake is projected to increase 10% each year, assuming increase in tourist visits and popularity of the product. The sales channels will be the shops along Mana Crisologo Street, which is mostly visited by tourists. 20% of the consigned product will be estimated to expire. This means that 80% of production will be sold, but the cost of goods sold will be at 100%. The returns will be treated as spoilage costs included in the cost of goods sold that is deducted from the sales figures to arrive at net sales. With the close proximity of the production and sales locations and the requisite for only a few administrative functions, selling and administrative expenses is targeted to a minimal fixed rate of 5% based on sales. Other assumptions which are actually targets for the 5-year sales forecast. Markup on cost to arrive at the selling price is targeted at 40%. Lowering this rate to below 35% result to net losses. 
Increasing this rate will position the selling price to an unattractive level which will bring down the sales rate. The sales rate is the portion of production that eventually gets sold to consumers and this is set at 80% with a balance of 20% charge to spoilage and added to the cost of goods sold. This target rate will result to a minimal 4.7% return on total sales. Based on the foregoing pandemic, business and tourism assumptions and estimates, the five-year sales forecast and net profit figures are shown on the slide. There it is! All about our Nanom Garment Vegan Longanisa. Thank you for your time. Please contact us at the details shown on the slide or through the UMP personnel you are familiar with. Stay safe always. Okay, maraming maraming salamat po. That's our bottle vegan longanisa gourmet from the University of Northern Philippines. Okay, now we proceed with our question and answer for the three uh, techno uh, products, veggie cookies, rice mungo sesame pulburon, and a uh, bottle vegan uh, langonisa gourmet. So we invite uh, Ma'am Mar Maria Fem, Sir Mark, and Sir Rob Roberto, plus our evaluators, Professor Matt and Sir Chris. Okay. Well, so thank you for the presentations. A quick one. Yung, yung sa tatlo, all of you, do you have early adopters now? Have you tried it to potential customers? Have they tried it? So we can start off with the, with the veggie cookies and then rice mungo and then the bottled uh, vegan, uh, uh, vegan longanisa. So meron na kayong mga nag-try noon and they can sort of uh, testimonial that in terms of uh, the taste, Okay, sir. So let's start off with the veggie, veggie cookies. Ma'am, nakamute po. Ma'am, please unmute your mic po. Okay. Again, good okay. afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So, uh, for veggie cookies, actually, I I ordered five packs of of veggie cookies or cookies and I bought it in our home and my children my children uh, taste it better than the the supermarket that I bought aside from your kids they may not have a <laughs> that <laughs> flexibility to say otherwise if you're involved also in the working of this one aside from your kids are there other people that sort of try this one out so okay Paul. So actually, this BG cookies is already in the market of the inventor. Actually, they have already uh, they have a bakery, and mm -hmm. it is already sell in the uh, bakery. And in terms of the revenue, how much is it sort of uh, getting? How much? So, is, how many? Okay, how many units have been sold so far? So far, since that is in the locality, lang so. Okay lang. Pero we still need an inv uh, uh, an inventor to finance the funds for, uh, for additional okay. market and for additional... Because if your story will say, you know what, in the different products of the bakery of your friend, 90% of veggie cookies have been sold. Uh, that sort of adds a very positive spin to it. Mm -hmm. For the rice mungo polvoron, polvoron is established sort of established uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, snack. It's not there for a snack, okay. So in terms of adoption, how is it? Uh, so far, sir, we are not yet, we have not yet had an adapter for uh, this technology. Um, we are still actually trying to gather all the information, particularly the nutrition facts so that it could be better marketed. Uh, we, um, as said in the video a while ago, we are targeting, because our college has a um, uh, has its own in-house um, uh, in-house production facility, uh, it is still being considered if it will be produced within the within the 
uh, with uh, within our agency. However, uh, we are open for especially for out of the city, out of the local uh, investors, so that uh, we could uh, increase the reach more. But we are still currently looking for the uh, nutrition facts so that we can better market it, particularly to uh, the public uh, in the public school sector. Since especially once the pan once the um, quarantine and lockdowns are over. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how much nutrition is sort of going to sell for, uh, but I suppose the first hurdle would be, okay, but on taste na to. Uh, so yes, sir. If you take a look at, I mean, they can have a blind test. I mean, may mga Goldilocks pulveron, may mga yung house of pulveron, ganon. I mean, and take a look at, they can have a blind test and see, okay, meron ka mga different pulverons in there, and then they get to try it, and then, okay, if you're able to capture yung pulveron nyo pala yung pinakagusto nila and they don't know it and that ito pala yung mga established brands, yours sort of taste equally good if not better. And then, by the way, in terms of nutrition, ito din yung ano because ours is made of this unlike the others. So, but at least you're able to establish kagad very early on in terms of the initial hurdle, the taste, puha na kagad. And then yes, now sir. you have this. Uh, we, have, we have done the... Uh, taste testing uh, already. Yeah. Just the nutrition facts is what's missing. Okay, okay. I suppose for the earlier presenters as well, if you're able to capture that in camera, if, especially if you have established brands already and you're trying to compete with them, okay, and in terms of the initial hurdle, which I think would still be the taste, okay? Uh, from kids to adults, from 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 the cookies to, to, to the bagoong, okay, compounded form, and then it's still taste as if the same as the the, the moist one or the may sabaw sabaw na konte okay so anyway thank you for that uh, the, for 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 the for the uh, battle uh, vegan longanisa so that concept yes sir i think has been around well may, may not be may not be the long, uh, the, the, the the vegan longanisa but i think others have been selling something like that in a battle form the longanisa okay? yes sir so so with those sort of products out there what's your competitive advantage are you confined just in vegan or do you have ambitions of because vegan is known as the uh, i mean known for its longanisa so it's it's sad if you just sort of confine yourself in 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 in, in, in vegan so but with competition out there how do you differentiate yourself well the differentiating factor will be the the, the taste of the longanisa which was added with uh, spikes that was laced with the uh, uh, locally known ingredients sir and as to the market uh, as to the market sir we will be trying out in the vegan in the locations around vegan uh, along mena crisologo streets we will be selling them all along that uh, popular street and tourists when that comes to vegan they always visit the street so that our outlets, these tourists will always see the product. And our uh, projections is just a conservative 2.5% of all the tourists that visit Vegan. Right now, the average tourist that visit Vegan is 1.6 million. If, if you get just about just around 2% of that, it will give us around 40,000 uh, so, in the market. So there are a couple of assumptions going into that statement. One is that well, no pandemic. I would suppose now with the pandemic, nobody's visiting. Yes. It, we uh, still have visitors, sir, but uh, the, the capacity is uh, around 30%. Did you use, uh, okay. Yes. We still have visitors, and we, we can also sell with those uh, to those visitors the online limited scale. But we, but we are expecting that around 2023, in the mid of 2023, will be. Uh, when the mm -hmm. vaccination has completed, we will be able to uh, have a hundred percent capacity in our hotels and inns, mm -hmm. and we will have that 1.68 million visitors in vegan. Two percent of that will give us a huge market. Mm -hmm. And if I may share with you, sir, a projection, an updated projection, because the video that you have uh, viewed is not updated one. Okay. Can I show okay. the updated projection, sir? Okay, you can. I suppose okay, for the, for I the can, organizers, go ahead. Okay, I'll show you the Excel file. This is an Excel file, which is, uh, which has a sensitivity analysis. You can change here the values here. Like let's say, you can change. Uh, excuse me. Uh -huh. Okay. 
you can change the markup cost. You can make that as 40%. And then all the projections here to the net income will be changed. And okay. if we... And so, so, yeah, I know the, the, the sensitivity yeah. analysis. Yeah. Quick one though, that's the other assumption that you have is that you're the only player in vegan. Yes, sir. No yeah. other uh, no other manufacturer as is selling bottle longanis as of this time, sir. Because? Uh, they might not have thought of it yet, sir. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, but, but others have thought of it. But we have something though that can say, okay, we have this, 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 this uh, utility models or something that's sort of going to protect you that for this particular taste that captures the vegan taste, you're able to have that one. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the, the original taste of the vegan longanisa uh, will be preserved in the bottle and it will be uh, enhanced with the spicy. If the, if the customer will choose the spicy one or the original taste, he can have the option. And uh, and uh, longanisa in the bottle are, are the same taste that are that are uh, are of the same taste of uh, the one that was that are cooked in the hotels and inns. To try to capture that one, because I suppose if this one is going to be successful, a thousand and one copy cats are going to be selling yes, sir, along yeah. the along the street yeah, of vegan. Yes, I mean, if, when we go in and, there and buy longanisa, it's not just one outlet for longanisa. There'll be many others sort of yes. selling their own versions of of, of vegan longanisa. Yes, but if sir. you're able to capture the sort of the taste and then uh, sort of capture the value as well in a particular form or what have you, at least it's going to put you in, broad, uh, in, in a better uh, footing compared to the others. If you, if you have the longinus in a bottle, you can take it anywhere. You, they can eat it along the way when they go to Ilocos Norte or other okay. parts of the, of the Ilocos region. And they can take it along, and when they when they want to experience the the taste of longanisa, they can just open the bottle and be, uh, take out the contents of the bottle. You can see here a comparison with financial state market investment. If you uh, if you invest 1.5 million in this in this business for a stake of 40 percent in the net income, it will yield you a 19.4 percent return in five years. Compare compare that to the 10 percent. Uh, average financial market returns and that will be a significant difference and of, uh, of returns sir yeah so but what i'm trying to point is how can you capture the value make sure that okay make sure that whatever i mean if there's a technology injected in there to, to capture the taste of, of, of vegans uh, longanisa in that bottled form how are you capturing that 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 that, that, that the innovation yes sir the, because the, all those assumptions yeah. are going to sort of okay, yes, go away if it turned out everybody else can do it. Yeah, that's uh, that will be the problem when when it's being copied by competitors uh, in the near in the when it is offered to the market. So, but we'll be able to probably expand the market to like sell it in the groceries and even in the other regions of the Philippines, so that uh, we, even the compet if we have even if we have competitors here in vegan. We have other markets that we can sell it to. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. Thank you. Um, Sir Chris, do you have any questions po sa ating tatlong presenter? Yeah, I have a question with, uh, with the vegan longanisa, right? Um, kasi if we, um, just thinking lang, if you guys are going to target, let's say, some hot hotels or this uh, uh, big conglomerates, I believe they they're not going after they're not after with the bottles, right? No, sir. no. <laughs> the target will not be the hotels and inns, but it will be the shops along the Mena Crisologi Street, that street that is always frequented by the by the tourists. Mm -hmm. It will not be available in the hotels because the hotels they cook the longanisa. But mm -hmm. this one will be sold along uh, the shops along the Mena Crisologo where the tourists can buy for themselves to taste it. And if they like the taste, they can buy another one, another one, so two bottles for every each tourist. And let's say 1.5 conservative, uh, conservative estimate. The other tourists will buy, the other tourists will not buy. So yeah, yeah. Okay. I understand. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking at the, the bigger picture uh, for you to have a massive uh, uh, sales in terms of your product, right? And the, the one that you mentioned a while ago, like um, um, offering your product 
outside vegan is a good strategy, of yes. course, because um, uh, as we all know that there's a lot of competitors in um, in vegan, right? Yes, sir. Especially yes. for Longanisa. And then if you are a traveler or if you're a tourist there, uh, me personally, if I'm going to vegan, I'm, I'm buying a bulk of vegan Longanisa. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, I believe if you go to the market of vegan, right? I think one of the best vegan Longanisa there is the one in stall number 45. Okay, so that will uh, I'll give you a strategy on how you're going to uh, uh, to leverage your product because I believe this uh, has a big potential uh, because as you mentioned, you have uh, this is a specific bottle, right? Yes. So medyo bago siya sa market. Yes, Kasi yes, yeah, even in, in all supermarkets, um, CDO is providing vegan Longanisa, you know, um, there's a lot of uh, mga food parks that offering longanisa like vegan longanisa. So I think if you uh, be more creative on how you're going to compete with the one yung mga dozens, dozens na nag-offer longanisa compared with the one na battled, which I think is much lesser in terms of number. Tama ba ako? Yes, sir. The all, uh, three longanisas in a bottle. Correct. And that costs 180 pesos per bottle. Tama ba? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Because uh, that's you are going to leverage. If three p, if the consumer will buy the three pieces compared with a dozen with a small number of margin in terms of money. So you have to think of that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, but that's very uh, exciting. Huh? I'm looking forward to uh, check on your product. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. That's all for me. Thank you very much, sir. Sir Chris. Okay. Um, we have a question here for um. For the veggie cookies, what is the shelf life of uh, the veggie cookies and what is the mode of invent uh, technology transfer aside from direct selling by the inventor? Uh, uh, Ma'am, paki-unmute po. Okay. Okay, good afternoon again. There is an expiration date in the packaging and at least two months, two months po in a shelf. Okay, two months shelf life. So, ma'am, aside from the direct selling, or do you have any other modes um, of uh, technology transfer? Because I mentioned your point, it's yes. being sold. By, yeah. So, maybe later on, we will sell that online and provincial trade fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, po, ma'am. Okay, that's it. I think my questions, pa po ba? No questions from our FB Live and from our Zoom. Okay, so kung wala na po, maraming marami pong salamat sa ating three technologies, ang ating, again, veggie cookies, ang rice munggo, sesame pulburon, at ang battle uh, vegan langunisa. Uh, maraming salamat po, um, 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 Mafe, uh, Sir Mark, and Sir Robert, and of course, our evaluator, si Sir Christopher and uh, si Prop uh, Matt. Thank you po. Okay. So that, that ends the second, the third batch of our uh, technologies for this afternoon. Uh, before we proceed po dun sa last batch natin, we'll uh, pause for a 10-minute health break. Um, let's come back po at um, 3.23 po. Okay? So see you uh, later at 3.23. Maraming maraming salamat po.
The University of Northern Philippines in the World Heritage City of Vigan, Ilocosur presents the production of Nanam Longanisa, a ready-to-eat gourmet vegan longanisa bottled in a healthy solution of spiced oil. Vegan longanisa is a pork sausage that is garlicky, spicy, tangy, and salty with a distinct pungent aroma stir-fried on its own rendered fat. It is a small and plump native sausage good for about two or three bites. However, vegan longanisa are usually uncooked, packed, and sold in dozens. Since vegan became a tourist spot in the late 1990s, it is usually served by hotels and inns as part of breakfast treats offered to tourists. What do the tourists think about vegan longanisa? Let's hear from them. We're going to get the best longanisa. We had, oh my God, last night's longanisa was insane. We're going to hopefully take you today to get this absolutely incredible longanisa, the best I've ever tasted in the Philippines. This is the world famous vegan longanisa. The ones that absolutely changed our life last night. They are fries, and they're probably like the length of two of these together. And then I ended up getting another five. <laughs> <laughs> Understand? Oh, they were a joke. They tasted so good. The same as yesterday. So delicious. <laughs> they are unreal. Just Imagine this couple and others like them finding a gourmet vegan longanisa in bottles that they can take with them anywhere and enjoy that same experience anytime. As a response to the inconvenience of cooking before enjoyment, several vegan longanisa is pre-cooked and can be eaten straight from the bottle. Hence, the enjoyment of eating vegan longanisa can now be experienced anytime and anywhere without the hassle of cooking. And differentiating it from other vegan longanisas that are sold packaged in dozens, it is sold by the bottle that could serve one or two persons. Financial Projections The cooking and packaging cost per bottle is estimated at 123 pesos. The two recent data from 2015 to 2019 shows that the average visits to vegan per year is about 1.68 million. Sales to tourists target is set to a conservative 2.5% of all tourists buying 1.5 bottles, that is, trying the product in one of two tourists buying another as Pasalubo. This conservative outlook projects the sale in bottles at 17,850 on the first and second year, assuming a 30% capacity restriction on hotels and inns. However, on the third through the fifth year, assuming that full vaccination rollout has finished and hotels and inns capacity is restored to 100%, the sales uptake is projected to increase 10% year on year. The sales channels will primarily be the shops along Mena Crisologo Street, which is almost always visited by tourists. With the close proximity of the production and sales locations, and the requisite for only a few administrative functions, selling in administrative expenses is targeted to a minimal fixed rate of 5% based on sales. On the slide are other assumptions which are actually targets for the 5-year sales forecast. To increase the ROI, these rates may be adjusted. We have designed a user-friendly Excel spreadsheet that allows such sensitivity analysis. Based on the foregoing assumptions and targets, the five-year sales forecast and net profit figures are shown on the slide. We are open to joint business venture that requires you to invest 1.5 million pesos for a 40% share in the net income after tax. This yields a 19.4 return on your investment, significantly higher than a financial market investment earning an interest of 10% as shown on the slide. We will be happy to share with you our Excel spreadsheet so you can play with the variables according to your projections. When you're done, let's do good business.
Thank you for your time and stay safe always. Okay, uh, welcome back po. We are now, we now um, toward, uh, almost towards the end of our program, but we still have one batch of uh, technology uh, presenters. Okay, so we'll start off with Amore Carrot Turmeric Tea, better tasting and aromatic tea that combines the power of two mighty vegetables in one. The carrot turmeric tea, um, a healthy and immunity booster tea from Ilocosur Polytechnic State College, and our presenter will be Sir Dominador Ison Jr. Hi, I'm Domus Ison from Ilocosur Polytechnic State College Research and Extension Services Office. Diseases attacking the immune system, limited supply of local herbal tea, high-priced tea products, hazard to the environment caused by tea production's intensive monoculture. These are only few of the so many problems that give way to the birth of our product an infusion of two mighty vegetables to bring out a healthier and more energetic you. A beverage that is an immune system booster, organic, economical to consuming public, and locally made. In these trying times, a strong immune system is an asset. This tea offers a multitude of health benefits. A natural and more affordable beverage with a taste and aroma for all tea lovers. As it was made with love and care for people who are nowadays at risk to dangerous diseases. The Amore tea will make you fall in love at first sight. The Amore Carrot Turmeric Tea The prospective consumers or the target market are the following. The tea consumers the titos and titas, online sellers, health practitioners, health conscious people, and working professionals. We will be using the following market opportunities. The emergence of the new normal where everyone is becoming health conscious. The availability of raw materials, carrot and turmeric are the top vegetables produced of the upland municipalities of Ilocosur the trends and preferences of the consumers, and instilling a global perspective, thinking globally, acting locally. The health benefits of a more carrot turmeric tea, anti-aging, rich in antioxidant, improves eyesight, prevents heart disease, boosts your immune system, improves digestive system and helps reduce inflammation. The Amore Carrot Turmeric Tea does not only ensure physical health to the prospective consumers but a promise of financial and economic returns to the prospective investors. For the first year of operation, the projected income is 1,062,547 pesos. For the year 2, 1,094,423 pesos. For the year 3, 1,127,256. For the year 4, 1,161,074. And the fifth year of operation, 1,195,906. With a net present value of 1,600,000 pesos, this represents the amount ISPSC may ask to negotiate for licensing this technology. The ISPSC team is composed of the pool of experts under the following specialization, entrepreneurship, 
technology and livelihood education and applied research. We are glad to collaborate with you in the future. Our contact details are flashed on the screen. Try a more character merit tea. Your love at first date. Maraming maraming pong salamat. That's Amore Caro Turmeric Tea. Uh, have you fallen in love with the, with the Amore Caro Turmeric Tea? Okay, thank you. So, thank you very much po, Sir um, Ison uh, from Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College. Okay, next, we have the Timonade Refreshment Drink, a tasty, natural, and refreshing functional beverage that is enriched with the right amount of vitamins and other functional ingredients to allow the consumer to overcome the day-to-day -day challenges of a busy work, from, uh, both from physical and cognitive perspective. Uh, this product came, uh, came from Camarines Sur Polytechnic College, Colleges, and our um, technology pitcher is Sir Christopher Bisaya. Nowadays, there are people becoming more health conscious and this affects of their buying behavior. People are more inclining towards the fresh, natural made and clean products. Because of this, the beverage market is also evolving, moving from products with artificial flavors and preservative towards more natural and healthy drinks. At the same time, consumers are not only asking for refreshing beverage, but also for those types with health benefits, either helping to restore the vitamins depletion over the long working days to give the energy boost to late working hours to cope with stress, get relaxed, and live with healthy life. By the way, this is Mr. Christopher Bisaya from Camarini Sur Polytechnic Colleges, Bicol Region, presenting the Timonade Refreshment Project. And welcome to DSTP Card Pitching Business Day. Because of new trends, a new class of drinks emerged in the last 10 years known as the functional beverages. This new category of drinks include the energy drinks and then the performance and sports drinks or ready to drink. It, the enhanced fruit drinks as well as the soybeans and enhanced vitamins water. The main benefits of functional beverages are very clear and appealing to the end consumer. It is include intense hydration, post of energy, rejuvenation, as well as health support and wellness. However, there is a still a lot of space for innovation in this market and many products started to merge as a consumer got more and more educated about the features of the new beverage category. Timonoid refreshment will be an alternative to traditional existing beverages in the Philippines as an affordable, functional, quality product. It is nutritious, natural, and clean products with no preservatives but with a well-balanced formula containing the vitamins and the active ingredients blended in a unique composition intended to help our consumers to stay focused and productive while drinking. Timonid Refreshment is a tasty, natural, and refreshing functional beverage that is enriched with the right amount of vitamins and other functional ingredients to allow the consumer to overcome the day-to-day -day challenges of busy work, both from the physical and cognitive perspective. The aim of this is to help our consumer embrace life with performance and happiness, make every day better, easier, more performing by changing the way people are drinking. Well, this is Lemonade Refreshment. The researchers from Camarini Sur Polytechnic Colleges choose lemonade to innovate and give a new taste of a twist and kamote tops and the lemon grass. And a new appearance in order to more competitive in the beverage industry. This innovation, the Timonade's refreshment, will give a new taste to all possible consumers of the product. The name Timonade was derived from the product itself. 
The letter T represent the two main ingredients, which is the talbos ng kamote and tanglat, or the lemongrass. Monade is derived from the root word lemonade. Like all of the beverages available in the market, tea monade refreshment will bring the refreshing feeling that you will feel not only to your body, but also to your mind. In terms of financial and economic aspect of the product, the way we see, this is very promising for every investor in the line of food and beverage business. At only 20 pesos selling price, we have 14.8 or the 5 pesos unit profit. Due to the demand, the production assumption is 5% increase in every cycle. Imagine, for 5 years return on investment projected, on the first year, we have 9%, and the five years, we have 36%. What's more, come and invest your mind and money in Camarini or Polytechnic Colleges. You want a refreshing business? Try Timonade Refreshment only in the Beacon region. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you po. That's Timonade Refreshment Drink from Camarines Sur Polytechnic College. Sana maraming salamat po, Sir Christopher. Okay, our next technology is pasteurized fruit vegetable blended uh, coconut water. It's an all-natural healthy beverage pres uh, preserving the nutrients of the coconut water fruit vegetable blend. This technology is from the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture. And our technology feature is Ma'am Hul um, Julieta Casaul. The story of our technology is every Juan and Juana's story. Each Filipino's childhood years is full of laughter, fun, and games. It will never be complete without that palamig across the street, buku shake at teens, and coconut water without ice during adulthood. Each of us has a unique sip of cocoa water at any point of our lives. Our niog is indeed our tree of life. But there is a big question in the eyes of this child. Papa, tree of life pa put ba talaga ang yog? Parang hindi na tayo nabubuhay sa kinikita po ninyo ha? The farmer's child is a point. The price of copra had its lowest for the last four years, dictated by the low-priced coconut oil in the world market. Can it give life to the aching and in tears farmers? Will the question of the eyes in the eyes of the child be answered? Today, we want to help this farmer give an answer to this meaningful question. Yes, there is hope to the coconut industry. Not only the COVID-19 popularized VCO, but as early as 2016, this byproduct is already eyed as the savior of coconut industry. This is the coconut water. Coconut water gained so much popularity as an export commodity. But being an isotonic drink and hailed as nutraceutical, all Filipinos should be served with this drink. Coconut processing plants are in the city where transportation of nuts is a hurdle. The congestion of our cities will continue to be a problem. Large scale industries utilize complicated machineries that produce lots of wastewater and chemical sanitizers after every processing. Being complicated in nature, only individuals can operate the system. To eliminate these problems, our technology was born. The village level pasteurized cocoa water technology. We bottled the beverage on the same day they were harvested or even up to three days, thus packing that unique taste of a plain yet soothing slightly bland yet what every tongue desires and preserves the distinct flavor that only a true cocoa water lover can tell. We can be at the heart of the community where nuts and farmers live harmoniously together. The machine can be housed in small space with panel board that both Juan and Juana can operate as long as potable water and electricity are available. This machine can be installed Hot water is recycled from this pasteurizer, a sanitizer of all the equipment, of the equipment and even all utensils used during processing. Juice extraction or infusion 
of flavoring is done and mixing it with cocoa water processed using high temperature short time method. The final product passed the standards of FDA for aerobic plate count and coliform count. It has a market potential of nearly 15 million pesos per year for Bicol region alone, as per the study of Ms. Hanilin Hidalgo. We are inviting corporations, federations, cooperatives, and MSMEs to be our investors to improve the technology. Let us promote this community-based industry, green technology, and nutraceuticals in the country. We are at work with this technology for seven years already. It started with a laboratory uh, experiment where the properties of the plain cocoa water and the pasteurizer were established. Then in 2015, this was installed in the Bicol region for the actual test run and now on its commercialization stage as adopted by the two cooperatives in Bicol as well as in Samoa. The competitors are the non-alcoholic drinks in any form but juices or sports drink are also included. The 25 coconut processing plants are mostly in the heart of the city. Trust our team who are working with this. Since 2014, we have a food engineer who developed it for seven years now, for seven years now, Dr. Ofero Caparino and Cedric Cornejo, while the food science group is into deep research for product development. With the enactment of Coconut Farmers and Industry Trust Fund, RA11524, the windows of opportunities are coming their way. What are you waiting for? With open arms, these farmers are waving for you, are waving for you with their big smile, ready to answer their children's question in embracing the fresco coco de Pueblo. Be our one investor. Invest in this green technology. Invest in the technology. The story of our technology. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Paul. That's for um, our pasteurized fruit, vegetable blended coconut water from Central Bicol State University of Agriculture. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Ma'am Julieta Casaul. Okay, our last but not the least technology is the Magic Immuno Booster Drink, another healthy beverage from the combination of malunggay, honey, ginger, and calamansi to boost our immune system. This product is from Sorsogon State College, and our technology uh, feature is Ma'am. Ivy Rose Gonzalez. Good day, everyone. This is Ivy Gonzalez from Sorcerer State University IT Office presenting our product, The Magic Juice. Taste the magic. Having a healthier lifestyle at this time has never been more crucial. And one of the most important ways to achieve this is to eat and drink healthy. Right now, most people turn to supplements, low-carb diets, as well as fruits and veggie diets. There's an obvious growing need for nutritional supplements, improving health awareness among people, and shifting patterns towards organic medication. But you know what? These are costly more often risky for those taking other medications and most times inaccessible to most people especially in rural areas now what we need is an affordable natural accessible and equally nutrient rich product enter our magic juice magic juice is made of malunggay extract honey ginger extract, and calamansi juice. Malunggay or Moringa olifera has been used for centuries due to its medicinal properties and health benefits. It's super rich in vitamins and minerals and also has antifungal, antiviral, antidepressant, and anti-inflammatory properties. Honey, aside from a natural sweetener, also has benefits that go beyond its delectable flavor. Ginger, which contains gingerol, has an amazing antibacterial benefits, and calamansi juice has good amount of minerals and vitamins, especially vitamin C, which is essential to building immunity. 
Malunggay juice is one of the very few malunggay-based ready-to-drink juices. With one serving, there's more than 200% of the daily allowance of vitamin A, rich in nutrients such as potassium, fiber, vitamin C, calcium, iron, and magnesium. Our product's business model is as follows. One of our key and important partners will be farmers as they will be supplying our raw materials for the juice. Through this product, we aim to help our local farmers by giving them an opportunity for additional profit. For marketing and promotion on the other hand, online platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and other social media will play a key role. Online shopping apps will also be key partners in going for a wider distribution of the products. For our products market opportunities, Europe was the largest regional market in the year 2018 owing to growing demand for nutritional supplements. Asia Pacific is the fastest growing regional market. China alone has imported a large amount of Moringa plant from India in the year 2017. Production of Moringa is majorly concentrated in India and some parts of Africa. Moringa leaf has the highest market segment due to the growing demand in dietary supplements. But market has been witnessing key developments in terms of product innovation to gain a competitive advantage that is providing easier to consume forms. As of 2010, more than 20 private companies were engaged in the Moringa industry in the Philippines. These companies are selling various Moringa-based products and the majority are in the form of food supplements as well as dry leaves, powder, cosmetics, and beauty aids. The product's IP value is at 860000 and is projected to have the following income in the next 5 years. As for our competitors, there are two major Malungay drinks that are locally produced. The V drink, which is a Malungay concentrate, and M squared T drink, which is a Malungay okra and ginger concentrate. Both of these are much more expensive and are mostly available online. Magic juice, however, is cheaper, and the plurality or combination of the ingredients gives higher nutritional content and benefits and magical tastes. Now what we need is capital for a spin-off company, so join us with our venture. The team behind the product is continuously finding competitive advantage to improve product quality and introduce more products that will meet the changing customer trend across the region. What are you waiting for? Invest now! This is Ivy Gonzalez again, and thank you very much. Okay, marami marami pong salamat, Ms. Ivy Gonzalez. That is our the magic uh, immuno booster drink. Okay, so that's our fourth uh, technologies. Um, we now invite, we now proceed to the Q&A and invite our presenters and our evaluators for Q&A. Okay. For the, for the pasteurized uh, uh, vegetable blended coconut water, what's the patent all about? Um, okay. Hi. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sir, uh, may I hear your question again? Pardon the patent na kasulat doon, what is the patent all about? I sir, that's the application. Bale, we applied for one patent in one of the flavors, which is unique, the blue ternate flavor. That, that's uh, on an application. Pa. Oh, I see. Okay, when yes, was that applied? And then... What's the status uh, last now? year, last year po, sir. So, wala pa pong bumabalik na uh, SER po. And tapos, ano yung likelihood na? What's, 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 your, what's your sort of uh, confidence in terms of a, a patent granted uh, for that? Mm, in and terms aside, of... So it's a flavor that only be achieved by your equipment or how is it? Uh, uh, not really, sir. Uh, I mean, we just get, I, uh, we just observe one unique characteristic that is it somehow improved the shelf life of the product among the flavors that were used. And the improvement of the shelf life, what was driving that one? Uh, the, the product becomes more stable and 
kung makalusot po <laughs> sa innovativeness. So, uh, yun lang po ang application namin. But then, all other flavors were also applied for utility model. The machine also was granted the utility model in 2014. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. Pa. And then for, thank you. And then for the Caro, Turmeric, you, the Timonade, and then Magic Booster Drink, I mean, all of you are sort of competing in the same space. I'd want to drink all, but I cannot drink. I mean, many would, would have to choose which one among the three, for instance. Like, why should I choose carrot turmeric over timonade over magic booster? Let's start off with carrot turmeric. Well, the carrot turmeric tea, sir, um, is a fusion of two mighty vegetables. So um, it is an immune booster, and we need that at the present time. Okay, thank you. And then for the timonade, by the way, so this, this, this tea, there's so many, I mean, infinity, serenity, I even encountered one, T-Rex, okay? So now it's sort of more natural, timonade. So why would we have timonade over carrot turmeric or the magic booster drink? Okay, so as mentioned by the researchers from the carrot tea, ganun din ang masasabi ko, sir. But you know, sir, uh, the timonade, uh, uh, might be the, our number one um, alternative drinks, lalong-lalo uh, na dito sa atin sa institution, sa school, uh, pinagbabawal kasi rito sir ang ano natin, ang, ang mga tenant natin sa canteen mag-offer mm -hmm. ng mga soft drinks. So mm -hmm. that's why nag-come up ang aming mga estudyante because I am one of the research uh, consultant of that na mag-come up kami sa juice as an alternative and friendly. And as you can see, the supply of raw materials like tanglad or the lemongrass as well as the kamoting or the sweet potato tops are very abundant naman dito sa probinsya natin sa Bicol region kahit kami ay binabagyo. And at the same time, friendly ito, lalong-lalo na yung mga tumatanda uh, nasa mga next in line sa senior moment. So may mga diabetes, etc. So this is uh, recommended ng mga doctor as well as sa mga uh, dietitian and nutritionist as well. So, so and, on, on, on that note, Halimbawa, when you see there's a directive among schools or from DepEd na okay, we're going to have our, our, our canteens instead of having those uh, uh, sodas, we're going to have more nutritious drink. How are you taking advantage of such directive? Probably not now because of the pandemic, but before or after the pandemic, how are you positioning yourself such that in the shelf of those in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in those in those canteens or what have you, nandun kayo? Say, ganito po, sir. No, sir. Sa amin kasi, sir, uh, in the context of Camarines or Polytechnic Colleges as a state university, this is an advantage na to monopolize the supply of that juice. Kasi may hold kami. Unang-una, we, we, we are a separate agency, so that's why we can operate. And ngayon, sir, ongoing na rin, sir, ang aming study on how to position, yung sinasabi niyo po, sir, uh, as well as yung channel of distribution. Kasi sa ngayon, sir, uh, this project kasi... Uh, nakasalang po sir for the another funding uh, project ito ng DUST uh, TAPE because this is under the DUST Academic Technology Base wherein ang ating mga researchers ay mga BS Entrepreneurship and sa course namin talagang pag nag fourth year sila talagang full time na magnenegosyo and kapag nag graduate dapat sila magnenegosyo so that's why yun na rin sir na ongoing na rin sir ang pagkandak namin sir ng another market study para dyan po sir Okay. Uh, sino pa yung hindi nakana? Si, si Magic, uh, Magic Booster Drink. Mm -hmm. And aside, yeah. in terms of packaging, yung, 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 yung sinabi kanina na Chris, we're in now, you have schools with those directive. Are you sort of packaged to cater to those, to those uh, markets? Say to the high school students or elementary students? Yes, yes. Actually, tama yung sister Chris. I agree with him. But uh, our juice, uh, the, the idea is actually born out of... Um, uh, our situation right now, yung pandemic na, and the researchers were uh, thinking na um, yung ingredients na ginamit nila is actually, uh, it will parang um, boost our body's uh, fight against uh, yung mga symptoms na, 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 na iniiwasan nating ma-feel at this time nga. So, uh, so, so doon siya nag-start. And... Uh, Yes, I think that's the really the ano yung parang siguro um, 
edge nung, nung drink namin. Doon siya mag, uh, ano kung parang advantage niya. Especially now na, na yun yung iniisip uh, na majority ng, ng mga tao talaga. So yung mga ingredients talaga talaga, inisip nila na, na doon manggagaling yung yung mga nutrients na yon na kailangan ng body as um, as to fight yung ating uh, pinakalabang virus as of this time. So so might be, but the reason that brought you all together is that you know what? There's so many options. There's so many options. You're just be one among the many. Now, how do you sort of bring yourself up among those so many other options? So that's the challenge that you're going to have, not just on the same players as the space that you are in, but also on those that are not so healthy, okay? That's sort of the more popular now, but you see a trend we're in, now you have this directive, but even so, you are still going to compete with others. Paano nila ma-differentiate ito, carrots, ito, malunggay, ito, ito, ganito, ito, ganito. So how can you stand out in that crowded field? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Pop, Prof. Thank Matt. You, Pop. Thank you, Sir Chris. Sir. Any questions, po, sa ating mga technology features? Sir, nakamute po kayo. Yes, actually, um, uh, very interested with the, those uh, three drinks, no? Um, actually, uh, I agree with uh, Professor that um, they just need to make sure, like, how uh, how do they need to stand out among the three, right? And then, uh, kasi. Imagine if you guys are like in one store, right? And then these consumers will pass by to your booths or stores. Parang pare-parehas na sa kanila, right? So um, it boils down a lot of factors from packaging, presentation, um, the people that going to offer your products, right? So um, uh, the put-up standees or the, the way you create the design your stores. Mm -hmm. And then um, if the, your people is very, um, if they know how to present or the knowledge about the product, right? So on how they're going to explain it to the market and to the target consumers, I think there's no reason for you guys to become so succeed or successful on this part. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm very excited uh, to all of you guys. Um, I think um, just uh, don't forget lang to, uh, to focus on small things, right? Um, because you're already there. The product is there. So just always put yourself on the customer's shoes, right? And then um, just put a uh, study on both the, the competitors and around the, uh, the areas, especially the location that you're going to put the stores or the location that you're going to uh, offer your products. That's it. Hey, marami, marami pong salamat, sir. Chris? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I uh, will entertain. May time pa naman po ng konti, but um, meron pong pumasok sa atin dito sa ating chat. Uh, this is directed to the cocoa uh, water uh, with veggies. Uh, from the product from cocoa with veggies, is the process peeling of carrots, cucumber, etc. It's not paring because you are going to use knife. That's from Ma'am Annabelle Valdez. Actually, um, sometimes we don't peel it. We, we just extract right away during the juicer. So after sanitation of the flavoring, then go straight to the juicer. Thank you. Okay. Marami pong salamat, Ma'am um, Julieta, for, the, for, for that. Thank you, Pa. Okay. Okay. So I think that's it, no? Wala na po, Ma'am, na uh -oh, from the FB... FB Live. So maraming maraming pong salamat. So this is our last batch uh, of uh, technology features for today. Hindi pa po tayo tapos. Meron pa tayo tomorrow. Uh, mga ngiting tapos na po yan yung nakikita ninyo. <laughs> so maraming maraming pong salamat kay Sir uh, Dominador, kay Sir Christopher, kay Ma'am Julieta at kay Ma'am Ivy. And of course, ating um, uh, evaluator, Sir Chris. Maraming maraming pong salamat. And uh, Professor... Professor Matt. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Okay. Maraming pong salamat. Again. Um, before we end po, we'd like to um, say thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you po sa ating mga technology features. So, ito pong nakita ninyo is produkto po ng kanilang lipang buwan na, na training po. And uh, to our potential technology takers, ating mga investors, uh, we would have a special mention po 
uh, si Sir Toto Barcelona ng Harvest who, uh, who is still with us until now. So mm-hmm. thank you sir for staying with us pati po ang Diamed uh, na, na nag-stay po sa atin the whole day. Maraming marami pong salamat. And of course, thanks po sa ating mga evaluators uh, since this morning po. Um, thank you po. And of course, um, special mention din po ang ating uh, technology pitch head, uh, head coach si Dr. Lily Ann uh, Lando. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, so, so this is our afternoon session of the second day of the technology pitching. But b- before we let you go po, um, we'll just show uh, what are the next steps uh, if you are interested in these technologies. Please uh, watch the video. Okay, sorry po. Hindi pala po video. So these are the uh, presentation, uh, the PowerPoint po. So, so for those interested po um, on the technologies, these are the next steps towards commercialization. So what would be our next step? So if you happen to uh, be interested from any of this uh, SNT creation, please explore with us either through technology licensing, product development, and other commercialization collaboration. Again, just fill out po yung downloadable term sheet and email uh, us at uh, ttpd at picard.com dost.gov.ph Again, that's ttpd at picard.dost.gov.ph Or you can call us for inquiries at 049-536-1574 uh, Again, I'll just repeat 049-536-1574 Okay? So maraming marami pong salamat um, this wrap up, um, wraps up the first day of our technology pitch. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope uh, you will still join us tomorrow uh, for more technology pitching. And this time we'll be focusing on equipment and machine category. Say, thank you po. Uh, see you all again tomorrow and have a nice evening. Okay. 8.30 po, di ba? 8.30? 9. Okay. <laughs>